Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, everybody tuning in. Uh, we are on episode 14 of Curse of Strahd, and um, the party has just made it to the crypts and catacombs of Ravenloft. So this is, um, this is going to be a, a fun one, I think. Uh, so the last two episodes, the party has been in Castle Ravenloft. It is a massive castle with many, many floors, and there is a lot of stuff going on here. They are with, currently, uh, the four of them are still with Ismark, Irina, and Esmeralda. Last session, they went up the tower and into one of the spirals, the spires of the tower, where there was a giant heart that was thumping, beating, and they destroyed the heart. And um, now, after destroying the heart, they have uh, turned back around and made their way back down to the crypts, where Esmeralda uh, is convinced both likely Strahd is down here, but also her, um, her mentor, Rudolf van, R van Richten, is also likely down here. So uh, they made their way down and are currently, uh, they made past the trap with a very successful perception check and uh, are now entering into the crypts. So let us get started. Just open up this. Da, da, da. Good, good. So. As you guys enter into the catacombs, uh, you actually, upon opening this, you do open a big uh, a stone slab. It was already kind of halfway opened, but you uh, realize that this slab is was itself depicting to be a a crypt. Uh, it's a similar slab to some of the other crypts here uh, that that's closing these rooms. Um, so buried deep deep beneath the keep of Ravenloft lie ancient catacombs with arched ceilings supported by wide, hollow columns that double as crypts. Cobwebs hang limp in the musty air. A thick fog clings to the floor, which is covered in putrid waste. The black ceiling above you is moving. So you guys step in. The ceiling moving, does it look like there's like a creature up there, like, or like bats? It or doesn't, like... it, it, you know what, it does look like, it looks eerily like it's moving by some sort of weird, not even sure if it's magic or something, but you also do see a lot of bats that are sleeping. So is this like a foggy, misty type stuff or other stuff? It is like a foggy, misty type stuff. It's like this, not like a black ooze, but just like this black blackness that's just moving. Do a bunch of smoke kind of circulating around. Yep, basically. And yeah, so there are these fog uh, still around, um, but it is below you guys. Um, uh, like, as you walk, it's kind of, like, at your ankles. And as you guys actually step in to this big, massive uh, chamber, uh, Irina, let me pull the rest of the group over. Irina steps in, and she, like, Grabs her head for a second. I hear something in my head. Uh, it's like something in here is is calling to me. What does it say? I don't. I don't really know. It's. It feels like there's a voice. I can't. 
it just does feels it, like does it, does it seem hostile or no comforting or I think it's I think it's comforting I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Is it calling you to somewhere or just something you can hear? I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe we should keep going. Well, I don't want to head back. I don't think uh, we are going to be able to make it across that gap very easily. Yeah, I'd rather not go across that again. <laughs> so you guys can see the hallway. Um, it's pretty big and pretty deep, um, but you can head um, east or south, really. What? Where does our vision stop? Like. Um. It's not th it's not super dense like it was in the other room, so you can see pretty far down the catacombs here. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's dark but not pitch black. Is there something illuminating it from like somewhere else? You must construct additional mm. pylons. Pylons. Did, uh... Thank you, Alt, for for the the resub. Um, so, I'm just wondering if there's like something that can like pull us one direction over another. Um, or it's not there. I, uh, I don't know. It. So sorry. What's the question again? <clears throat> Is there any like obvious light coming from one direction? No. It's obviously, all pitch black. Okay. I mean, if, I have dark vision, but if you guys need light, I do have a lantern or candle that I could. Uh, I could cast a light as well. Yeah, I guess uh, I will just cast light at the top of my uh, staff if that helps. Okay. The druid staff. Do these look no, like? No, my other staff. The normal, the normal one. Do you know, these look like, like a slab that's like on the floor? As in, like, there might be an opening here? Um, yes, it does. So I think I, like, seeing those slabs, I think I'd cautiously go to investigate that um, open area. I, okay. I follow the crow. Okay. Um, Remember, don't touch anything. <laughs> don't um, touch it. Unless it's really shiny. No. <laughs> no, I don't touch it. You know what? Um, I'm going to use the sun sword. I'm just going to pull it out. Okay. So you take the sun sword out. Uh, it does help illuminate as well. Um, um, over the next like couple of mm, like minute or so, I'm just going to keep increasing the uh, strength of the sunlight until it's max. Okay. So. Um, as you guys walk over to this crypt, um, the stone door of the crypt lies on the floor. Its inscription obscured by fog. The crypt gates open. A skull, some bones, and a few bits of rusted armor lie atop the marble slab. Uh, actually, I can reveal it for you. Because it's quite in view now with the, the sword and, and the light. Um, so, uh, a few bits of rusted armor lie atop a marble slab with a leering stone gargoyle squatting at each end. Are there any weapons or just rusted armor? Uh, just rusted armor. Toras kind of peers his head and goes, doesn't look like anything. Kind of turns around and starts looking somewhere else. <clears throat> he seems a bit, uh, a bit spooked. Um, 
looking down at the door, uh, because there is a bit of a light uh, shining, you'll see on the door on the floor, the epitaph reads, and Enderovich the Terrible, what the blood of a hundred wars did not do, the spurn of a woman accomplished. And am I crazy, or does it look like the doors, like, fell down as if something from the inside pushed them out? Perhaps they just fell down like that. This is a very old castle, it seems. <clears throat> are there doors okay. right here as well? Um, there are doors. One over here. Uh, yes, uh... There are doors uh, on the top here, top here, down here, side here. What is this randomness? Yeah. <laughs> My OCD. <laughs> are, do we see kind of in the on the floor any footprints or anything leading to any of the crypts indicating that someone might have been here recently? <laughs> Um, you do, actually. You, uh, don't even need to roll investigation check to see that, um, there is, uh, there are some footsteps leading down this way and down this way. Sorry, what was the second one? Uh, like, kind of around here, it looks like. It leads to. Oh, on the far right side. Oh, okay. Remember, if you hold down shift and ping, it'll move our vision to there. Oh. Oh! There right. Oh. So I'd suggest maybe we follow the footprints in terms of. I mean, we are looking for Van Richten. So maybe if there are footprints that could be where he went if he passed through here. That might be the answer. Or it could be our horrible death coming. <laughs> Why not both? Just kind of give you a nod. <laughs> so I, I'd start heading this way. Okay. I'll follow behind just a few steps. Um, so walking along, you you guys are just kind of walk, walking and glancing. Um, let me just see what you would read on some of the walls. So all of these um, catacombs, all of these crypts have different inscriptions on the on the slabs. So as you're walking, you guys might just be observing. Um, so the one uh, <clears throat> right here, as you're walking by, it uh, writes, Prince Ariel du Plument, Ariel the Heavy. Uh, and then on this one, you see, it's kind of around the other side, but I'll say that you see it anyway. Um, Artank Swilovich. A friend and member of the Barovian Wine Distillers Guild. <clears throat> where are the where are the doors for these ones? Those are There's one here. Uh so oh, and you would have saw this one. There's one here. There's one here. Here, there's also one down here. Uh, so you would have saw this one next to the slab one. Uh, so next to the broken slab one here, you read Duchess Dorfinia Delizna, Delizna, and uh, here you read yeah, one that Delizna. I think so. I was thinking about Endurovich sounds familiar for this broken yeah. door, but I can't place it. 
on this one here, you see Piddlewick, fool of Dorf Dorfnia. And of? what was that? Was it fool of Dorfnia? Yeah, fool of Dorfnia, Piddlewick. Um, and actually, uh, what's everybody's passive perception? I think I'm 12. I'm going to close my page accidentally. Uh, 14. Uh, 16. 16. Oh, 14. 14. <clears throat> um, for higher than... Yeah, 14 would actually be good, too. Um, you guys hear... Um, like a noise of some sort of footsteps um, or movement coming from th uh, this crypt here. So from Piddlewicks? Yes, Piddlewicks. Is it movement like just someone shuffling around? or is Yeah, it like just somebody shuffling around. Or... Okay. Um, try to open this one. Okay. Or look for a way to open it. Okay. Uh, roll me a strength check. Am I, like, pushing it, or...? Uh, yeah, you would be rolling it, because it's like a big slab. You can roll it or pick it up. Yeah, you have no trouble. Um, you pick it up. Uh, you open it up and, uh, look in. A skeleton draped in rags lies atop a marble slab in the center of the crypt. Hanging on the back wall is a handsome quilt that depicts a royal feast. Hmm. You probably look at the skeleton and go, nope. Look at the quilt. Hey, Gizzard, look at that thing. <clears throat> it's kind of cool. very nice. Sorry. No touching. Nope, no touching. And he kind of moves <laughs> on to... <clears throat> Hearing some shuffling in here, I'm going to go up to it and try to whisper in. Fenrickton, um, is that you? Um, you don't. You don't hear a response. You just hear like, like very light footsteps uh, moving. What seems like maybe just moving around in the in the little crypt. Very light footsteps. Let's see, can I put together if the footsteps seem like a creature that wouldn't weigh as much as Van Richten? Um, roll me a intelligence check. Here we go. <laughs> um, it seems like maybe it's a child or something. Like the light footstep of a child. I don't think that that's him in there. Footsteps seem very light. Like a bird? Maybe a zombie or something. Yes, he didn't respond back either. I say we leave this one closed. All right. So I'll back away. Um, and we also saw, you said we saw some footsteps more towards this area? Yep. Um, so I'll cautiously make my way over there. Unless anything catches my eye. I'll follow. Mm -hmm. um, Irina, uh, Esmeralda, and Ismark follow you guys as well. Uh, Irina just seems very distracted. Um, Ismark asks her again, like, if the voice says anything else, and she just says, I'm, I'm, no. She just seems, like, very distracted for some reason, and doesn't really know what this voice is saying or what, if it's calling her somewhere. She hasn't really been able to figure it out yet. Um, okay. So as you make your way, the footsteps, they kind of trail off at this point. 
Um, it looks like maybe it was heading south, but from this point forward, you don't see uh, any more of the footsteps. So in that case, I'd probably listen at these two doors to see if I hear any sound behind either of them. Okay, um, you don't hear anything. Uh, on the written on the inscription of these crypts are the one to the left is Sir Leonid Krushkin, Sir Lee the Crusher. Bigger than life, he loved his jewelry. And then uh, the one uh, to the right reads Tasha Petrovna, healer of kings, light unto the west, servant, companion. For us to notice the jewelry one uh, door, be like, definitely don't touch. <laughs> I, I look longingly at the jewelry door, <laughs> um, but reluctantly move on. Um, although a healer, if there's anything related to healing in that tomb that might be useful in future fights. Mm -hmm. Soros could try to open the door again. Train 23 again. Okay. You uh, do open that one up, and um, upon opening, um, <clears throat> you see uh, an oversized. Oh, not that one. You see a skeleton wearing tattered priestly vestments lies atop a marble slab in the center of the crypt. The, the, do the domed ceiling overhead is painted with a glorious sun mural. I'm going to walk over to take a look. Okay. Kind of hold the sun blade over it to get a good look inside. So um, you see uh, uh, Tira in this room. Uh, draped around the neck of the skeleton is a sun-shaped holy symbol. Um... And yeah. Um, do I recognize the holy symbol at all? Yes, you would notice that this is a holy symbol of the Morning Lord. By the way, in Discord, yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Um, I'm gonna look at Gizzard. Just say. This seems like something that may be useful. Do you mind if I touch it? <laughs> um, I'll kind of walk over and look at it. I'm just going to point out that this is a symbol of the Morning Lord. I would like to examine. Might be useful. I do have proficiency in religion, so I will say that... Gizzard. I think it is okay to pick that one up. I will gently, while well, saying prayer, even though I'm a Hell Knight, I will uh, try to not dis disrupt the priest. <clears throat> I, the holy symbol. Okay. The hope of being a uh, less, uh, doing a greater good by using it, maybe. Oops! I didn't realize well, that's that. what it does. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought I was going to display the image, but I guess it doesn't. Um, I think I actually have it. Okay, so uh, it looks like this. And as you pick it up... Um, so you pick up this item, the holy symbol of Ravenkind. Um, and a uh, ghostly female voice speaks to you as you uh, take it up. There is a grave to the west with roses that never die in a place built by healers in the village called Kresk. When all turns to darkness, touch this holy symbol to the grave to summon the light and find a treasure long lost. And yeah, you guys now have the uh, another very valuable item known as the Holy Symbol of Ravenkind. Uh, and I just posted it uh, in the chat. Um, 
it is a uh i'm wondering if anybody can use it because i think it's a cleric item uh yes, at the very top cleric or paladin of good alignment okay so i think only tira uh, <laughs> tira gets all the good items <laughs> I was gonna so. give it to like Durkarel or something. <laughs> yeah, I remember I we. Yeah, we had an. To hold this. <laughs> yeah. Only one of our players could use it too. I couldn't because I was a rogue, also. So yeah, it's it's kind of a specific item, but. Yeah, you have it now, uh, Tira. Would I know that only I can use it? Um. Uh, I would say without even rolling a religion check, you would know that yes, this is uh, um an item that seems very specific to people who are worshippers of, of, of good aligned deities um, and not so much just your average Joe could use an item like this. Sorry all of you what average you, uh, Joe uh, <laughs> player. How dare you? Kiss or not Joe. <laughs> I'm just going to tell the party that um, this is a, it seems like it's a very powerful holy relic. Um, and I'm going to it around like cool so you'll uh, be attuning to that and Jeez, yeah i'm reading through this i got a lot of cool Dang. shit yeah has 10 charges and you can expend one charge to paralyze vampires for a minute yeah that's insane yep um Okay. Not sure if my audio for some reason in my you guys sound really low to me. I'm not sure if like everybody. If it's me, I might be speaking soft. I think it might. Yeah, it's mostly you, uh, Avex. You do sound a little low. I'm uh, really tired. Okay. So uh, I turned you up all the way. I can. I can turn <laughs> my interface up. Sorry. Do I sound okay? Um. Yeah. You. You sound fine. I I'm just speaking up. softly. Turned everybody up. Just test, test. Yeah, you <clears throat> sound okay. Test, test. Okay. People noticed that when I was streaming yesterday. It's like, sorry, I'm not sleeping well. Been a rough week. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you guys, um. You guys find that? What would you? Where would you like to go next? Uh, I go down a little bit since the footprints went south. Try to look to see if there's any indication down here of any footprints or anything out of the ordinary. So we're also go the opposite direction. Um, I'd like to see if there's writing on this door. Okay. If there isn't, <clears> I'm not gonna touch it. Uh, oh dear. Um, that is number. So as you walk in that space, um, <clears throat> Torhas, uh, roll me a Dex. Roll me a dexterity okay. saving throw. Do I see what's coming? Um. Because if so, I do have advantage. Unless it's like from behind or something. Um. Roll me a. Uh. Roll me an intelligence check. <clears throat> oh, that's not gonna be good. <clears throat> yep. Um. You don't notice it. Dex. But you step on a uh, pressure plate, and uh, you didn't oh. notice the small, tiny holes on the walls 
as uh, oh, crack twelve too. Fuck. Poison darts come flying out oh, no. of these little holes. Not more poison. Uh. T uh, now roll me a Constitution saving I throw. <laughs> I got plus seven on these, so usually. Okay, so that's good. Um, so you will take. Damn, my rolls suck. <clears throat> Oof. 20. You take four piercing four. damage from the darts, and then six poison poison damage from okay. the darts. Um as they come flying out when you step on it. But uh, you do see uh, written on the crypt, um, St. Markovia, dead for all time. Yeah, you could say that way. He's kind of pulling these darts out and turns back around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what kind of be like, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <clears throat> Wait, wasn't there St. Markovia's happy? Yeah, actually, that's what. That's that's in that's, the crest, right? Yeah, that's where we're looking to possibly take Irina. Yeah, I'm I'm rolling a six on intelligence. Torres does not recognize that. He's a little focused on the darts in his body. What does this door say? Since I'm I turned. Uh, that one is the one about the wine. Uh, oh, it's the wine one. Yeah. Um. Keep theater away from that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you're making your way down there, Krell, you do see there's kind of like two directions here. Um, you roll me a investigation check. See if you can. Twenty nine. Oof. Um, Twenty. You do see uh. This, like you do see some signs of movement. You don't see the footsteps anymore, but it looks like, uh, like some of the the debris on the floor has been rustled with a bit, and it's heading down this way. Okay, I kind of uh, point that out to the rest of the party um, that it looks like someone's been through here recently. I suppose, shall we follow it? Uh, yeah, I'd like to. Okay. So you guys all follow. Um. <clears throat> the crypt. Minding traps. The crypt to the right, as you're kind of glancing as you walk by, uh, it says, Sir Cedric... Spinwitovich, Admiral Spinwitovich. Confused though he was, he built the greatest naval force ever assembled in a landlocked country. Sure. Um, I, and me as a player, I want to check that door out, but <laughs> uh, kind of reading it out loud, like Admiral <laughs> Spinach. <laughs> What's up, what it says? Uh, as you guys are walking. Irina, wait, wait. Oh, actually, this isn't the right one. Shit. Um, it's fine. I'm gonna change it. There's something, and she starts just walking over this way. <clears throat> yeah, Torx uh, is gonna ru uh, rush I'm over and kind of, yeah. Everybody's like, wait! <laughs> Every <laughs> yeah, everybody's trailing behind her. Like, wait! Don't go! Don't! She just keeps moving. <laughs> Irina, no touching. She looks and is stands. She moving, is she moving briskly? Yes. Or... Yes. Okay. Uh, Toros would try to block her if possible. So she. What's, what's um, her speed? Her speed is. Uh, I don't know. That's an interesting number. <laughs> uh... It's probably 30. It's probably sturdy. It's it's probably the default, yeah. Can I? Cause I have forty. Can I rush it in front of her? Uh, yes. If you want to rush in front of her, and she's just yeah. please. I just want. I need to go this way. Let us investigate first. This place is dangerous. You know that. 
she grabs her head and stops for a moment um, and doesn't move. Uh, she does listen to you, uh, Torhas. And as you and Thurkarel kind of look around this area, you do see this crypt uh, in front of you. It says, Irina Koliana, wife. Uh, uh, um, Thurkarel, do, do you read the same thing I'm reading? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll usher Ismark over. Uh, Ismark looks and he is also in shock by this. What the hell? And Esmeralda will say this is probably where he intends to keep her. Torres is gonna turn to Irina. Is she still just like kind of holding her head? Yeah. Um. Irina, <clears throat> what's your earliest memory? I. I don't think. Think of the people. Do you remember any people? I just remember my. F is Mark my f and my father, the burgomaster, I, I don't remember. I remember growing up in Barovia. I don't remember anything else. Hmm. How, when, when she says that, like, does she say anything about like, how old she was in those memories? Or... I was a young girl. <laughs> I was six, seven... Why not pose the same question as? Actually, yeah. I'd probably repeat the same thing as Mark then. Unless Tira does. Yes, um, I was about 11 or so when Irina was found outside of the village and my father took her in and eventually she just became my sister. That's... I don't remember anything beyond that. It's only when she got a bit older is when Strahd began tormenting her. Uh, Can you explain how Strahd tormented her? He would come to the village and try to claim her when she was outside, but he could not enter our mansion unless we invited him in, which we never did. And... Because of that, he became spiteful and angry. He sent ravens, wolves, bats, all sorts of creatures, zombies, undead, and they clawed at the house and I fought many of them off. And my father, he locked himself in the mansion with Irina. He was so distraught by it, he, his heart wore out eventually from all of the attacks and the creatures being sent to our mansion. This place sucks. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm just going to ask, wait, did Strahd attack your home? Because you, we met you right after your father died. Saying Strahd attacked recently as well? He's been attacking for months upon months yes yeah, I seem to remember when we visited the house there were like deep claw marks in the uh, in the structure Tira does your does your sword or that pendant you found say anything about this door <clears throat> I can't see this voice <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna focus on the sword as it's, you know, it's lighting the way anyway. Um, you, the sword doesn't say anything to you, but Irina, as you're kind of holding the sword out, her eyes light up for a second, and she, she was, as she was holding her head, she puts her, 
her hand down. Sergey. She all she says. <clears throat> she said Sergey. Yeah. I'm going to, if I remember correctly from last time, I figured that out already. So I'm going to say, yes, I believe this sword was somehow attached to Sergey at some point. I've never. Yeah, we did. I don't understand. I've never. She's like, she kind of almost like she has dual personalities for a second. She says, I don't know who that is. I've never met I'm him. I'm going to hold the sword out in front of her. I'm going to say, I'm going to hold on to the sword, but you may touch the hilt. See if that does anything. She touches it. Closes her eyes for a second. Like, shakes her head, and this other personality uh, comes out. He's here, Sergei. He's here somewhere. We have to find him. I'm just gonna. Are you oh, saying Sergei is here or something <clears throat> else? It's. It's gotta be Sergei. I feel it. Does the sword seem to be pulling us in any direction after? Uh, I'm gonna just mention that the sword wasn't really saying anything other than it seemed to recognize Arena. Um, it's, you don't really, it doesn't seem to be pulling you in any direction, but Irina shakes her head again, like, and grabs her head. I, this place, I don't understand. It's, it's. <clears throat> should I open this door? Maybe we should keep Irina a little bit away from it. Yeah, I'd say. Irina, if you wouldn't mind, step back and we'll <clears throat> check out the inside of this and make sure there's nothing. Okay. Um, Torhas, roll me. Yeah. Okay. Nice. You, you open it. Um, the crypt is empty and has been swept clean, and it's a very, uh, it's the cleanest crypt that you have seen thus far. But there is nothing inside. Um, I'm gonna roll an investigation. Okay. Let's see if it's is it oh wow nineteen. Is it like recently cleaned or is it like it was cleaned and never like nothing was really in here? Um recently cleaned. <clears throat> okay. So we can assume that this is a prepared chamber. Yeah. Okay. Before I was kind of shrugs. Nothing in here. Let's look for... Sergei's? Sergei's, yeah. So I'd like to go to this door and see what this one says. That one? I would one. walk to this one then, as okay, well. Okay, um... I'd be here at that point. Uh... Well, we are supposed to be looking for a Van Richten, no? Not Sergei. Esmeralda looking speaks up. Close. Yes! We were, we were getting closer. Uh, Wait, how do you, how do you know that? These tracks. We don't know they're his, right? I feel like they are. <clears throat> I know he was here. Um, all right. So on the one um, that you're looking at, Thur Karel, uh the crypt says Kazan. His word was power. Oh. Torhouse kind of walks past. Like, sounds like something Gizzard would want to look into. Yeah, wasn't that the name of the wizard or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was the name of the wizard who had the tower before her interrupted. Yep. And then the one that you're looking at, Torhouse, says uh, Stabal Indibak. A truer friend no ruler ever had. Here lies his family in honor. I don't think I would have recognized that name. Right? It doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. I would have started heading in, in this direction after that. Kind of just passing by all these doors. Okay. Is there uh, a door here? Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Um, well, actually, no, there are no doors there. They're Not on the, the other side. Okay. Oops. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'd, I'd head for this one. Yeah. Would, uh, just passed by Kazan's crypt and give like just a small bow. Okay. To the to the doors, but I wouldn't try to open it or anything like that. Just gonna go there. <coughs> um. Okay. So, uh, looking at some of the other, the door here, that one says, uh, King Kotsky, Kotsky the Bright, ruler, inventor, and self-proclaimed -procla time traveler. Whoa. Hey, Gizzard. <clears throat> Come check this one out. Time travel, huh? Yeah, but he says he's I'm... a king. Oh, well, many people do. Well, maybe you could get something from here. Maybe another throne. Or a crown. I already have a throne. It's in the cart. But you could have two. I don't need two thrones. What if you have a queen one day? She can get her own throne. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> if nothing else is happening, I would probably head this direction. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay, so on these three, you see. Colorado. Damn, I'm Um. So the one uh, to the left here, uh, you see written on it, Petrina Velikovna, bride. The second one, <laughs> Sir Eric Vanderbucks. Yeah, she's she's the dusk elf, right? Petrina. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And then Ivan. Uh, Ivan <laughs> Ivilskovich, champion of winter dog racing. The race may go to the swift, but vengeance is for always for the loser's relatives. It's a weird one. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ivan Ivilskovich, champion winter champion of winter dog racing. The race may go to the swift, but vengeance is for the loser's relatives. In other words, I don't... Ivan's a sore loser. <laughs> I guess. That's the only way I can read that is, yeah, you won, but I killed your brother and sister. Um, this You said this one was Petrina? Uh, this one down here, did I reveal it, is uh, Petrina. Uh, this one. What is this one? Uh, that one. Uh... Um, that one says King Troisky, three-faced king. And then the one next to it says Artemis. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, is king Troisky is this one. Oh, this one's king, okay. This one? That one is Artemis, builder of the keep. Thou standest, standest amidst the mountain monuments to his life. God. Uh, and then oh. this <clears throat> one says Sasha Evil Evilskova, wife. I would make note of this one, the Artemis okay. tomb, saying maybe there's a maybe. Floor plan since there's 500 rooms in this damn place. <laughs> Otherwise, if no one takes interest, I, I'll go over to Petrina. Okay. I wanna, I wanna, yeah, I wanna try to open the door for Petrina's. Okay, um, roll me a strength okay. check. Yeah, what, one, what was this one as well? It was something well, about a bride, wife. I guess. Yes, Wh that... I think wife of Artemis? Uh, that just said. Uh, where is it? 
Sasha Ivilskova, wife. Oh. Uh, so uh, you do successfully open the uh, one for Petrina. Jesus. Give me one moment. No crawling, no touching. Music change. Um, upon opening, um, from the darkness comes a horrifying visage of a spectral elf maiden, twisted by the horror of her undead existence. She wails, oh. and the very sound claws your soul. Why have you awoken me? Uh, I'm gonna pull out her brother's ring, the ring of warmth, and I say, your brother sent. <laughs> she sh is shocked by this. Casimir. He, he, he hoped that you would be willing to return to your people and to have peace at last. There will be no peace. Uh oh. And, until he dies. And Strahd dies. All of them who have scorned me will die. Cas Casimir still loved you as, as your brother. Tell me, where but, is he? By the suffering of your, his people. Where does he lie? <laughs> Where does who lie? Why do you want to know where Casimir, Casimir is? Tell me where he lies. He Casimir. Lives. He lives. He dare live while I suffer in this crypt. He dare he live. <clears throat> that fool. He is the reason I am dead. Is it though? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, is Tira here? He I'm... Okay, um... He still cares for you. What? I'm just wondering He, he if, did like... not know that you were dead, but he wanted us to bring you from the castle to, to return to your people. He said that you wanted to become a bride of Strahd. Yes, and Strahd had me killed. <sighs> They will all suffer. They do not we know the fury of a woman scorned. We are hoping to defeat Strahd. Yes, why do you want Casimir to suffer for your own choice? Do not speak anymore, you foolish people. Do not speak. Tell me where he is. Why would we do that? I will kill you all, if you do not yeah. tell me. I will not tell you. We do not know where Strad is currently. Well, he might be up in a chapel, I think is what he said. What if you come and help us kill Strad and then we tell you where he is? I do not... I am not listening to any of you. I do not dare listen. Tell me, where is Casimir? I was gonna say he is far from here. We don't even know how we got here, really, so. She screeches this loud banshee screech. That's a cool picture of a banshee. Um, she screeches, uh, she wails, um, make a constitution saving throw, all of you. Oh my god. Are y'all within 10 uh, of Tira? Or no? At 20. Are you within, uh, Tira, you're down here too, right? 
I've been keeping next to Gizzard ne or in Arena, mainly Arena. And I think I was closest to the front because mm. I, I had yeah. the ring and I was directly talking to her. I'm like right behind Thurk Row. So probably would have been fair to keep near Arena. Ooh. Uh -oh. Also, I just had her. I just had her hold the uh, sword uh -oh. too. That's an eight. Uh oh. Plus two plus two. Still, uh oh, Still I think. Tens are not good. Oh no. Um. Third. I have to roll four. Take sixty tens. I... <laughs> no, that's not what it does. No. Yeah, don't by the way, it's like um, instant, by the way I don't know if this affects anything, but there is also just like sixty feet of sunlight around me. Um, sorry, give me one second. I know what it does. <laughs> oh, yikes, those are all low, too. That was a good run, folks. <laughs> <laughs> So, Gizzard and Ismark. Upon hearing this wail by the Banshee. Uh, oh shit, she's in sunlight. Ah! Uh, Get wrecked. Re <laughs> I I don't think anything happens. Hey. Because she's in sunlight. Hey, and we got a bunch of sub gifts as this is happening. Thank you, Sith. You must construct additional pylons. Oh, wow. pylons. Yeah. That one <laughs> so, um, you must sorry, I'll wait for all the, the, the additional pylons will be constructed. Pylons. And the sun sword has saved you all. Once again, the sun sword. I'll restore my hit points. <laughs> yep. Once again, the sun sword com comes clutch. You must construct additional You're pylons. welcome, guys. <laughs> when you guys were telling me earlier that <laughs> no, we want to be a little stealthy, and I'm like, you know what? Nah, we're inside a crypt, so there's probably undead pylons. shit. So and it's like a, this, this and up. you know what? If you hadn't pylons. had lighted that, there would have been consequences. So you must construct additional pylons. Drops, yeah. pylons. Yeah, you just dropped a zero hit point. Yep. Right, you're not dead. You still have that saving throws, right? On that case, or? yeah. Uh, yeah, you still have that, but so yeah, it doesn't like uh, the effect just doesn't work. So there is an there is a if you all pass something, what else would happen? But just she does wail. Uh, she releases this mournful wail, but nothing. You guys just all kind of cover your ears, and um, she looks down at all of you. Tell me now! She screeches. I would have prepared my, uh, my worn battle, uh, axe at that point. Or great axe. Did I not add that? I did. <clears throat> I'd be holding an attack action then. I'm just gonna, it does I'm not just seem to be going well. I'm gonna glare at her and be like, why all this hatred for Casimir instead of the one who did this? Because my own people had me killed. They they punished me. What for? <sighs> the 
because I wanted to marry Strahd. And how did that go for you? Not the well, way I take it. She doesn't reply, and at this point, she's looking around. She, you see her looking around the room, and she's she flies off. <clears throat> oh boy. So we're gonna have to deal with the revenant and her next. <laughs> she flies um, in this direction. I'll just throw a skeleton up on the board here. <clears throat> She flies in this direction, past all of you, and her incorporeal movement. She flies through you, Torhas. Uh, okay, it doesn't do anything. Um, and just com keeps moving past, so she moves about here, and she's heading in uh, this direction. You guys can do something, or you can just let her fly away. Cause she looks like she's just gonna fly away. So, because I was holding an action, and she went through me. Do I did I have an attack of opportunity or something? Um, yeah, you could if you want. If you wanted to do that. Can I try yeah. thwack her? I would say yeah. Um, quite a few of you have attacks of opportunity. Yeah, I would have taken a swing. Same. Okay. Uh, ooh, that's a twenty-two to hit. That hits. Esmeralda will take a swing. Um, and she takes half damage, right? So seven for me. Yes. Um, and uh, Esmeralda does hit also, so half of nine is... Four. <clears throat> so seven and four. Okay. So even magical weapons are half. Oh, yeah. Magic oh! It's magical, yeah. So that's still nine. Um, okay. Um, do you guys uh, actually, Irina? No, actually, Irina's too distracted right now. She's not going to do anything. Um, Tear all the ten if that hits. I got it. That misses. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Just, do you guys amazing. pursue or do you just let her fly away? She didn't respond to us hitting her. Nope. And, and I'll shout at, at, after her one more try. Please, the enemy is Strahd, not Casimir. Um, roll me, roll me a persuasion check at advantage, because a few others um, tried to convince her as well. She... She screeches again, though it has no effect on any of you. Um, does not seem to listen, and she has spite and anger in her eyes to to destroy the people who have wronged her, and she continues to fly off. Um, we'll come back. Hmm. I want to intimidate her, but I just don't know how. Like, I don't know what to say. I don't think we have really any leverage on her. Yeah, rip. Yep, so she <laughs> flies off. Um, and... Yeah. You guys do not know what happens to Petrina at this point. However, in her crypt... You see uh, thousands of coins and a spell book. I'll give the spell book to uh, Gizzard. Not, not touching. I, not touching. Oh, okay. Oops, I just lost it. Then I won't. Okay. Um, and just leave the things alone in this creepy crypt. There it is. Please and thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
Um, all right, so yeah, that's that's all that's in that room. So, uh, Torhas, you wanted to check out the builder of the keeps tomb, maybe for um, um yeah, I, we can water. You spilled water. I'm stepping off to grab a bottle of water. Oh. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to open the door for the builder. For the builder? Uh, roll me a strength. Yeah, but damn, I keep hitting the freaking D&D Beyond dice. Roll me a strength check. Yeah. 13. Um, you try opening it. It's not quite enough. Uh, you guys see Torha struggle yeah. a little bit with this one, though he has been able to successfully open the others. Been like five doors, like it's getting a little tiring. <laughs> um, can I try to? If you want to try to assist, uh, you can roll again, Torhas, at advantage. Yeah. So you guys both heave this big slab, uh, and you do successfully open it. Um, a. S a skeleton, a skeleton draped in rags lies atop a marble slab in the center of the crypt. And actually, yeah, there's actually not much in this crypt at all. Oh, unfortunate. <clears throat> um, and there isn't a door here or here? Oh, oops, there is. Uh, yeah, those two were red. Um, let me just check here. They were... Uh, uh, Sir Eric Vanderbucks is the center one, and the one to the right of it. Oh, wait. Oh, that wasn't the, the winter dog racer. Oh. Okay, so ignore what I said about the winter dog racer. That's in a different I crypt. <laughs> I don't even remember which. I think <laughs> This one or something? Yeah, ig ignore that. This one, actually, as you're looking at it, Torhas, it says Torhas Dendarian. Dardarian. Dardenrian. Yeah, yeah. Darden I knew, I knew, I knew, Dar Dardendrian. Dardendrian. Torhas Dardendrian. What in the hell? Hey, that's you. Want us to check it out? Preferably not. Do you want us to destroy the doors? I would rather leave it right there. It's probably Straw playing some trick. <clears throat> if it's anything like Irina's, it's probably just empty. Looking um, to. Uh to your guys' left, I guess. Yeah, looking that way. Um, you do see... I was a, wondering, is that the chamber or a door? A giant chamber with stairs that look like they lead downward. There, Carol, can you find those uh, tracks you saw earlier? Uh, didn't I see the tracks before up here? Uh, yes. So it does. Uh, roll me another here, investigation right? check. Yeah. Up here. Twenty six. Damn. Nice. It looks like the. So again, you don't see tracks, but it looks like it. Whatever you were tr following does lead down these stairs. So I'll indicate that to the rest of the party. But should we think there might be a tomb with Sergei? Somewhere. Wait, sorry, what? Uh, the, do we think there might be a tomb with Sergei somewhere? Probably, but I mean, it could be a separate set of crypts down what, this way, so. Yes, what is the point of finding Sergei. We're here for Henrik and then they find other info, yes, but Henrik is priority. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The so tracks were supposed Sergei. to be 
him, so. Yeah, Sergei is. Probably long, long dead since dead, I was 100 no? years what ago. Is... Right? Yes. From my understanding. But he might have a ghost or something. I don't know. I don't really want to deal <laughs> with more ghosts. Okay, so do you guys head down these uh, big stairs to follow the tracks? Uh, Thorhaus probably would, yeah. Yeah, my vote is yes, unless... Tara, did you want to attune to that holy symbol first that you found, or...? Um, that's gonna take like an hour. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I don't, don't want to think stay we here have any need of a... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. In that case, I will head down the stairs. Okay. So as you head down, um, wide steps descend to a landing flanked by two alcoves. Within each alcove, taking up the full 30 foot height of the ceiling, is a bronze statue of a warrior holding a spear. A soft blue curtain of light flows between the two alcoves. Dimly visible on the other side of the curtain are more descending stairs. Does Do the spears look like they're bronze as well, or do they look like they're actual spears? Uh, they look like they're bronze. Okay. And do the warriors look like anybody we recognize? Um, no, they do not. What's your guys' alignment, actually? What's everybody's alignment? I am neutral good. Chaotic good dog. Chaotic dog. neutral. <laughs> for me. Yeah. Nobody's of evil alignment, right? No. no. Chaotic neutral. All the way. Okay. So, glancing through the curtain here, I'm just gonna go ahead. Even if you don't step down the stairs, you can at least see it. Um, <clears throat> one moment. This is actually the, the, what the room looks like. <clears throat> this tomb rests in hushed silence. S tall stained glass windows dominate the eastern walls, allowing dim light to fall on the two coffins, resting atop white marble slabs. The one against the north wall is marked King Barov von Zarovich. And the one against the south wall is marked Queen Ravenovia von Re Royen. The vaulted ceiling 30 feet overhead is inlaid with beautiful gold mosaic. And laying in the center, you do see Rudolf van Richten. Does he look unharmed? He doesn't look good. He looks bloodied. Um, Esmeralda, who was following, <clears throat> will, uh, as she sees this, will immediately run down the stairs. Mm, Taurus would as well. Did I? Did I'm going to cautiously hang back, but slowly move down the steps. Did I reveal the area? I don't think I did. No. Oh, there we go. Okay, now you guys can see it. I'm gonna point out the circle, this seems too easy. You think Kyoto is the easy getting here? Yes. Considering I all would... the other hardships we face and ever elsewhere. I would consider those hardships as part of getting here. I'm gonna 
was going to say, we found Von Venrick because Strahd wanted us to. Stay on guard. <clears throat> Esmeralda will approach him and look at him, and he looks very wounded, bloodied. He holds two pieces of paper in his hand, his weapon drawn, a large, a long silvered sword. And Esmeralda looks at him. Van Richten! What... What's happened to you? And Van Richten looks up at her. I don't have much time. You know what you need to do, Esmeralda. You must fulfill our last task. She looks at him and notices a bite. Nah, rip. Uh, Toraz seeing it would call Tira down. And make an ocean to it. Esmeralda holding him. Why? Why did you do it? You f She in anger, she... You foolish old man. I came here to help you. These people, they came here to help you. We could have come here together. We could have taken him out together. Why? And Esmeral uh, Van Richten stops her. No, Esmeralda, you know I had to do this. You know I was sent here to take him out. and You know that I'm cursed that if anybody comes with me, they will die. He looks up at all of you as he sees the rest of the group come down. You all, you've made it this far. And for that, I thank you. Hmm, Taras <laughs> would probably extend his arm and hand out. And, uh... He would gesture to the silver sword. We'll finish it. He coughs up a little bit. <laughs> And he hands you his sword. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we all had to part ways back at the tower. The truth is, I had planned to leave that day. I had planned to come here to the castle. And I knew I couldn't do the job on my own. The truth is, you all don't know, I... I am cursed. An old hag cursed me many, many moons ago, and my son... My son was cursed as well. The words that she said as people around me would die, would perish. I didn't want to put you, Ed Esmeralda, at risk. I didn't want to put any of you at risk. My son, he once too became a vampire spawn and I had to put him down as well and kill him. And to that day I <laughs> swore to try to stop these things. To stop the one who started it all, Strad von Zarevich. You all. And he coughs again. <laughs> <coughs> you all are very brave and you've weakened him. That heart. That was his heart. I too fought him and he is weaker in a weakened state. You will be able to finish the job. I believe in you. Is there anything else we should know? Before it's over. Job. Mm -hmm. He has many allies lying within this very crypt. He will not be alone. Mm. And you, and he looks up to as uh, to uh, Irina. You should find Sergei's crypt. It will anger him, no, no doubt. But it is the one way to truly enrage him beyond any other. To provoke him. If you want your revenge, you can provoke him. 
please. I don't... I don't have much time. He looks I'm to Esmeralda. Like, we can finish the job, sir, but we must know, is there any way we can find some respite till we, before we face him? We are also very weary on our way here. None of us are at our, at our full strength. Do you have any ideas? He will not let you leave with her. You can leave. But he will not let you leave with her. What if he doesn't know we are leaving with her? How would he not? If he could not see her? He has prepared everything. He feels her presence. He rests now, trying to regain his strength. If you leave, his strength will be restored. He rests in his crypt. You know where his crypt is from here? It is south. Is Van Richten uncomfortable by the sunlight? Or not yet? Mm, not yet. Okay. I'm gonna look to Esmeralda and just ask her, do you want me to do it or do you wish to? I cannot. I cannot let you do this. No, you cannot kill him. There must be a way. Toros would kind of like place his, his massive hand on on her shoulder. <clears throat> we both know this is the only way. And he pulls out Van Richten's book. We both know. Yes. He he agrees. He nods. You know, Esmeralda, this is the only way. She gets up and steps away. <clears throat> Tears in her eyes. He says, I, say I know it may be difficult, but I can take care of this for you so that he will be at peace. Mm -hmm. Toros would look to uh, Esmeralda. I lost an entire company to vampires. You don't want to see your brethren, your comrades become the enemy. And he would gesture to Tira to do the deed. Van Richten. Look to Van Richten. <laughs> kind of let him give. Because I figure he's, a, he's in a well enough mindset to accept what I need to do. Van Richten says one last thing. As Esmeralda turns away and looks away, she kind of takes some steps back and looks toward one of the tombs and you always knew that my final task, I had my one final task, Esmeralda. You knew that this day would come. And though you thought my final task was to defeat Strahd, that was not my final task. My final task was to train you. And now you must fulfill this final task. Esmeralda doesn't immediately respond to that, but she begins tearing up even more. And Van Richten looks to you, Tira, and nods. Do it. Basically that. <laughs> I'm going to Oh, you cut oh out. did you cut out? I think you cut out, Tavine. Yeah, I'm going to line up the sun sword and, be, and just say, may you find peace and hopefully respite from curse. I want to thank you for your help. He nods to all of you. 
and execute order six. Yep, I won't. I won't even have you roll for it. Um, it just. Yep. You finish. Rudolph. <laughs> Rudolph Van Richten, who was to become a vampire spawn. And with that, let's take a break. Because <laughs> um, I have to go to the bathroom. Um, yeah, that was very sad. Poor Van Richten. Oh. Van Richten. He's great. I love him. Um, yeah, so we'll take a break, everybody, uh, in the chat. Hope you guys are having a good time. Um, and we will be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Mic on. I'm back. I have to do so much of the dirty work for the party, except for you when you kill the one dog. <laughs> I mean, if you said no, uh, Toros is gonna do it. Yeah, I know, I know. I but yeah, but you are, you also have to kill Gertrude, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but also that's why you just hurt him over in the first place. I mean, I'm the one that has a sword, so I feel like I'm kind of yeah. I am back. Okay. 
So, um, are these doing it? Uh, yep, good to go. Um, seeing that he has a silvered sword, I would ask Esmeralda, do you want to carry carry his sword, or do you want uh, one of us to bear in his memory? She takes out her sword and hands it to you. Thank you. I, w- I would like to use his sword. Wait, what? I wanted to use his sword. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, well. I don't have a magic weapon. I want a magic weapon. She. Uh, okay. she you, you, can, you can have. She offers up hers, basically, is what she's saying. Well, she has a plus one rapier, right? Uh, Not bad she... at all. <laughs> um, yeah, she also has a silvered short sword. What did he, did, did Actually, he sorry, uh, let me just double check what Van Richten, um, because I just made that up. Uh, let me, <laughs> let me just look okay. at a stat block really quick. I know he has a... A martial weapon of some sort. Yeah, exactly. Like have something to fight Strahd with. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yep, yep. Text you why I was like, give me the sword. <laughs> you cheeky mother. <laughs> hey, you, you got two items. I ain't got shit. I didn't say it. I just said you cheeky mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have the stone, I guess, but I keep forgetting I have it. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure. Tracy, what was the, the DC for the darts earlier? Do you remember? Uh, the DC? The, the dex. Yeah. Uh, like, what was the, the save? Check. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it 13? If for, to, to save, it was a 15. Oh, I wouldn't have gotten it then. Okay. Because um, I have that luck stone, I keep forgetting to add it every time. So actually, yeah, he does have a plus one um, rapier also. Oh, you can add so a global pay modifier, I think, to your batch. Does that work for... Um... It should. Beyond 20 as well, though? Oh. It should. It does. So, basically, she she offers up hers. They're, they're the same, but, you know, she... He wants his memory kind of thing? Yeah. yeah I, I, I can trade the two weapons with her. Okay. So, yeah, you get a plus one rapier. <laughs> He's kind of looking at it like, this is not at all what I'm used to. Actually, she looks at you... If you're going to take it, I have this. And she does actually have a plus one hand axe. Also. Axe. She's got a lot of weapons. So, so Torhas is getting a plus one rapier? I currently am holding a plus one rapier. And she's offering me a hand axe mm-hmm. so that she can have two plus one rapiers. She wants to dual wield. <laughs> yep, because she oh, cool, she does actually. she does multi attacks um, so. though. <clears throat> Technically, I can too. I have a hand axe as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the plus one, and I'll sheath. <laughs> I've got two axes on my back right now. Check out my normal hand axe, and then I have the plus one on as well. She'll actually look at you, Thurkarel. Do you have a magical weapon? No, although I do have um, the oil of sharpness, which I intend to apply against. Apply my weapon against Strahd. She hands her other plus one rapier to you, so she's uh, willing to take uh, Van Richten's and she offers you hers. I will uh, take it and uh, thank her. Okay. Okay. So yeah, she has, yeah, plus one rapier and a silver short sword now, so. Uh, and then, yeah, she gives you the hand axe and yeah, okay. Okay. So uh, what would you guys like to do next? Uh, 
Well, <laughs> been for anything else that may be of use. Politely, of course. Politely loot his body, yes. Um, on him, you do actually find a few things. Uh, did I just close out of it? So, uh, you do... You do find uh, a note from him, a journal entry, um, which does retell of some of his... Some of his past life. Um, it's very lamentful. And uh, it talks about how many people name him as a hero or a sage or a master hunter. But the truth is, he's had this obsessive nature uh, to destroy vampires after a vampire murdered his child. Uh, and that his career is not one to be idolized. Um... <clears throat> And yeah, it's just a, like a very uh, lamentful uh, kind of journal. On the back of it, you do see written, looks like it re was recently written, the word indigo. Interesting. <clears throat> what were the colors on the entryway here? On which entryway? That flame puzzle thing. There was oh, an indigo. Oh. Yeah. I'm gonna point out that this may lead this may be the clue we need to where Strahd is. It's a good idea. And is that journal entry the same torn page that he was holding? Yes. Okay. Also on him you find uh where is he? Rictavio, where are you? This is not Van Richten, it's under Rictavio. Um, you find a ring of mind shielding, a spell scroll of, and a spell scroll of, of raised dead. And a hat of disguise, which you gather that he used to put his identity of Rictavio on. I would uh, take the hat and offer it to Gizzard. Look straight up your alley. <clears throat> or Thurkrow, if you'd also gesture. Can you, can you wear it under your headdress? <laughs> That's what I was thinking about. I don't know if I can wear two hats at once. If you want it, you can have it. That the ring is interesting, though. It would add to my collection. It kind of shows off the one ring that he took from Awis. <laughs> um, go ahead, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he'd offer the spell scroll to Gizzard as well. What does that ring do? He doesn't. He doesn't mean Awis. He means the mind shield one. I don't know yet. It looks cool though. It does. So yeah, Gizzard, if you don't want the hat, I'll take it. Yes, you can take the hat. Alright, I don't think I can use it until I've attuned to it though. But I'll put it on at least. Okay, so you put on the ring of mind shielding. And who's taking the spell scroll? I offered it to Gizzard. I don't know if he took it, though. Uh, I don't know if I can read this one. <laughs> it's not my type of magic. Taurus is going to kind of look at it with his absolutely zero magical knowledge. Somehow um, I rolled a 15. Can anybody use a spell scroll, or does it any... Doesn't have to be... The... Oh, it only... It's supposed to be a spell list, so... Yeah. Tira can use it. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, it doesn't... Uh, It looks like a magical spell scroll. Um... 
you realize that this looks like it could be a way to um, bring somebody back to life if they die. I feel like Tauros wouldn't actually know that. I think I think he might recognize that it's like Mm. I kind of want to say, like, the scroll maybe has, like, some anatomy on it. Mm-hmm. And then infer that maybe it's something with <clears throat> life and death, and so he would offer it to Tira. And that's kind of all he would say about it. It's like, maybe you can use it. I'll take a look at it, and then... I recognize... Uh, should I roll something and see if I recognize it? Um, I think you would be able to immediately recognize it because it's in your, um, spell list, right? Yeah, realm of expertise. That yeah, it is a spell scroll for one use of raise dev. I'm like, I will uh, link that then. <laughs> I say this might come in handy. Hmm. Hold on one second. My spell. Help. <laughs> Okay, that's what I thought. <clears throat> I was wondering if Raised Dead would work on a Van Richten. <laughs> but uh, I'm like, I'm pretty sure you'd have to roll like uh, restoration on him after that. Yep, yep. To remove the specs. I was like, <laughs> what does Google say? <laughs> Spell pulls for Bard, Cleric, and Paladin. Yep, so you'll be able to use it. <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> Then Rickton dying and immediately being resin back. What the hell? <laughs> uh, so I think we're we're good here, right? There's nothing else in the room to look at. Just big stained glass windows. Oh, there's some uh, tombs as well, right? Oh yeah, the two tombs. Yep. All right. Yeah. No touching. <clears throat> but Van Richten did mention that he has allies down here. Mm hmm. Strahd has allies. Or, sorry, <laughs> Strahd has allies. Still, enemies, in, here. in other words. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Rahadin is down here somewhere. Right. So I'm this. wondering if. Like, I don't want to. Taurus would probably disagree with desecrating things, but at the same time, we're in Castle Ravenloft, of all places. So Torhas would put out there that he's not entirely against if we find like, for example, like the crypts that were open already that just had random bodies. Maybe uh, dice them up a bit. No, I just feel like this room in particular feels a little special. Which one? Which one? Uh, the room we're in now. Oh yeah. Um, I, I was more saying not just creating ones in here, but. I'm not opposed to tomb looting in general. Did we? Sorry, did we already read what's on these two? Yes, you uh, saw the one um, to the north, north is uh, Queen, Queen, King Barov von Zarevich, and then the south is Queen Ravenovia von Royen. Did we infer these might be like Strahd's parents or something? Um. Yes. Uh, you see, like, an effigy, uh, a life-size effigy of um, both of them by their tombs, and that's what they look like. That's kind of I'm going to look at Torhas and say, Torhas, have you read any, have you read Van Richten's notes and books? Yes. Um, these should be the tomb of his parents, of uh, no, Strahd's parents. I'm just gonna ask something. Like I'm just, po I was pondering while we were walking along, or whatever. If hypothetically, 
<laughs> I killed him with the sun sword, and we were to use this scroll on him, would he continue to turn because he hadn't turned yet? Bedrickton? Yes. Yeah. He, would, he still would still turn. turn. There has to be some sort of divine power. He's referring to restoration, like greater restoration. Um, All right, but he doesn't I, know that. I, I pretty much like mur I, 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 I'm like I'm just pointing. Out, I killed him with sunlight, <laughs> like radiant sunlight. That is a good question, but I don't yeah. think that's how that works, right? That's that's. I crazy. don't know. I'm just posing the question to you as two people who aren't familiar with this. I think Ben Richten would only know that, like from the notes that Tauros read, that like greater restoration is the only way to remove the the effects of a bite. I don't think killing them necessarily with sunlight or even a silver weapon would actually remove that. Sure. I think it just kills them. <clears throat> Unless Tracy disagrees. That's my understanding. Um. Yeah, I would agree. Fair enough. So far. That's what I was Googling earlier. I was like, I'm pretty sure he can't just to revive him. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Because he has a scroll of raised dead on him, so I, I guarantee you <laughs> the people who are authoring this want someone to try at some point. <laughs> and the DM's just like, whoa, baited. <laughs> <laughs> um... So for these these um, these caskets, I'm assuming these are massive caskets, right? Yes. And they just have like the sliding stone slabs thing on top. Yeah. Yep. I'm not gonna fully push it. I just want to kind of like test my strength against it and see how much it resists. Like, is it gonna be easier or harder to push open? No touching. He's just... Yeah, he's touching, but... Um, it seems a bit easier to open these coffins than the big slabs on the crypts. Yeah, he's gonna turn to Gizzard. I know we said not to touch, but I really think we might want to destroy these. Why don't... I have a better idea. Why don't we leave them alone? They are Strahd's parents. And... Ben Richten, before he died, did say that he will have his own allies. I'm getting a very strong feeling that these might be them. He has allies everywhere in this castle. Do you want to deal with three Strahds? I don't. I don't think that... Uh... Opening them and disturbing their bodies would make them any happier, though. But if we have the chance to get rid of two of them now, or one at a time, as opposed to all three of them at the same time, I'd rather take it now. I don't know. This room with the stained glass, this room is in light, whereas the rest of the places are in darkness. <clears throat> Isn't it like super stormy and stuff outside still? Yes, it is. So it actually wouldn't be that much. There's light. at least a little light coming through this. There is. Class, right? Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure it's probably like later, so that's probably more likely moonlight than moonlight. I think yeah. Right. My uh, vote is not, not to do anything with these tombs. What does Esmeralda think? I do not. I do not know. <clears throat> do not know. Do you, do you want us to put uh, Van Richten in one of the other tombs? <laughs> I don't think we should put Van Richten anywhere near Castle Ravenloft. Go ahead. Stop to Esmeralda. I feel as though we should not should not worry about where to leave him until we're agreed we're done with our we have bigger things to worry about 
I, I agree. I think we should press forward. All right. <clears throat> Irina says to you all, he said something to me about finding Sergei. We did say we'd find him after finding Van Richten. He said that it would enrage Strahd. We find Sergei's too, right? Yes, it, he did. I... I don't know if we want to enrage him at this point, but I feel like I should go to this tomb of Sergei. So one question I would ask the party is, do we want to try for a short rest to a tomb to like the amulets or the hat of um, disguise those, those items? I haven't taken any damage since their last short rest, but... It's been about 30-40 minutes thus far. It's Actually, it has been quite a while of you guys exploring these crypts. Um, I don't know, does it, uh, short rest or, like, to attune to an item, do you have to rest to attune to it, or does it just attune in time? It's a short rest, you're supposed, yeah. You're supposed to, like, rest. focus on it for, like, an hour, right? Okay. Yeah, which you can do during a short rest. The longer we wait, though, if we're getting a rest, that means Strahd is also getting a rest. As Merlda will speak up. You did say if we leave, or the more time we spend here not fighting him, he goes stronger. Or he regains the strength that was depleted from yeah, so. Van Richten and the heart. Perhaps we can find the script of Sergei if we're going there. And then we can make a decision decision afterwards. And if okay. we need the rest. So Toros would then kind of ascend each stair. Okay. And then start looking for Sergei's tomb. <clears throat> I think we're can't he what? say Strahd's no. tomb to the south? Did he see where Sergei's uh, was? I think he said, said he's around here. He said Strahd's was to the south. I don't think we know where, where Sergei's is. I just want to caution, be cautious no. about going to the south if we're looking for... Well, we already checked all of the other ones, right? Or maybe not this one? We didn't check these. Um, sure. Actually, I'll just go ahead and give you guys just like a quick... So I, we'll say like Torhas just like quickly scanned. Um, yeah, that's all I'm doing. And probably not running into traps. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Um, just looking at the next row of tombs here. Um, He's not going to really pay attention to their names, so if you want to simplify it to Sergei's is it here in this row or not, because <clears throat> he won't pay attention. He won't okay. care. Uh, it is not uh, in this row. Okay. And how much further does it go this direction? Um, it looks Is there like, like another row here. Looks like there's the several rows. Oh god. Yeah, so he would just kind of zigzag looking at each one. Um, if, if anyone else wants to stop at a particular one, I'll oh, I'll wait, but and read them, because he's not reading them. Uh, so, a uh, quick glance, you don't see any, um, it looks like there's lots of noble names, uh, as you're continuing. Um, Irina will actually look to you, Tira, and say... The voice seems to be getting dimmer this way. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> so I would. I think we I have would to actually, go back. I would Retrace. Actually, uh, 
have Irina then stand next to me, and I'd kind of we kind of like walk together, and I'd kind of use her as a guide. Um, she will <clears throat> guide you this way. Um, uh, Ismark. <laughs> Ismark dis disappears into <laughs> the abyss. He goes through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's a ghost. We have to go all the Kill way back. <laughs> to the to the beginning. That's where I felt it the most when we first walked into this room. Um didn't you feel it here? She felt it like here, right? This is Irina's tomb? Yeah. Or yeah. So she does stand in front of her tomb for a moment. <clears throat> We have to keep going. And she's actually going to take you guys all the way north. Okay. Um, all the way up here. To this? Yep. Or this? Oh, I didn't even see there was a door there. Um, you guys actually, it, you don't even see a door. What you see is a portcullis. Oh. Um, a portcullis is closed in the archway to this tomb. Um, you can kind of see within, uh, like, stairs that descend down. Um, but it's hard to see in, in, the, t uh, in the tomb. Do I see any, like, lever or winch or anything? Mm. Roll me an investigation check. I just popped out the roll 20 thing. How do I... There we go. Uh, 17, you don't see anything. Um, you just... You don't see anything around the immediate area. No levers or anything. You, th you infer it might be open from the inside. One of those ones where you have to open from the inside. Or what? Or we could potentially try to it in terms of lifting it probably not i don't i doubt yeah, we could break so an iron portcullis or whatever it's made of well should we try to lift it uh, i'll help somebody try to lift it i don't want to try it by myself because it looks heavy yeah toros would help or mainly do it <clears throat> Okay. No, we would be helping you. <laughs> um, so you guys, like, Torhaus takes the brunt of it, and uh, you guys all kind of, like, help him a little bit. Ooh, like, a group heave. Um, Torhaus, roll me a strength check at advantage. 19. Um, it's a bit of a struggle, um, as you guys are all holding it. Um you're able to lift it and hold it for everybody else, uh, but it f oh, feel actually, like it's a twenty. I have I have the lift. Oh, down, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so you are <laughs> able to, <laughs> you are able to lift up this portcullis, um, and uh, have it open for everybody. Oh. Okay. So, you guys descend down the. White marble steps descend to a tomb that has a vaulted ceiling 30 feet overhead. A stillness, a calm amid the storm, is felt here. In the center of the tomb, a white marble slab supports an intricately inlaid coffin. Chiseled into the slab is a name, Sergei von Zarevich. To the north, Behind the coffin are three alcoves. A beautifully carved statue stands in each alcove. A stunning young man flanked by two angels. Looking as polished and as new as the day, uh, each was placed there. An iron lever protrudes from the south wall west of the tomb's entrance. Hmm, pretty. Uh, ignore this roll I'm about to make. <clears throat> Work. 
does this work? Let's get the computer ready. Work. I'm trying to get that global save thing to work with. Okay. Irina. Irina will step forward into this room and look around. Ismar kind of follows hesitantly as he too, he's still like very unsure about everything. Irina, please be careful. And she, no, this is, this is where I need to be. And she'll walk up to the tomb. She steps up. I'm gonna walk behind. Not step up. <laughs> Can you help me open this? <clears throat> Toros would step forward. Okay. I'm going to keep watch with the sword. Um, what's your alignment again, Torhas? I am neutral good. Uh, and what's your alignment, Tira? Is it lawful good? or? Seriously? I only have one, one I was, alignment. I wasn't sure if it was lawful or neutral good. It's definitely lawful good. Okay. Um, Goody two shoes. Paladins. <laughs> the paladin doesn't have that lockdown in five E comparatively, but I am lawful good. Roll me a uh, strength check, Torhas, to open the the tomb. Okay. Oof. Oh god. Uh, you st are struggling a little bit to open this. <laughs> You're taken Happen back eventually. by the by the beauty of this tomb. The most this is the be most beautiful tomb that you've seen. Are you sure we're supposed to be desecrating? This place looks really pretty. I'm going to step up to help. Tira, you step up to help, and you don't even need to uh, roll a strength check. You're um, do it anyway. But you did it anyway. That was a success. But it opens easily for a creature of lawful good alignment. So. Just going to look at Torhas and just like... Like shrug, like what? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you open the tomb and you see uh, a man who's who looks like he's not even dead. Um, the flesh uh, is still there, and it almost looks like he's sleeping in the casket. Upon looking he in, he doesn't look like he's um, what's it called? Uh, not mummified, but like when they. Uh, embalmed? Yeah, embalmed. Thank you. No, actually. It doesn't even look like that. Um, and this is what he looks like. Wow, so handsome. Strong jaw. <laughs> um, so, upon this happening... Actually, just give me one second. It looks like he would be in an interview with a vampire. Does he look like he's breathing? Like, is his chest moving? Uh, roll me an investigation check. I have such a bad investigation, yeah. Seven. Yeah, you're not able to tell. It doesn't, it doesn't look like he's breathing, though. Um, I'm going to hold the sword over the casket and focus on the sword glows and illuminates, and, um, give me one second. You hear a voice. It's not coming from the, the body in front of you, but a spirit. Irina hears a, a gentle voice calling to her. The sword activates it, and a handsome youth with a kind, noble visage appears in front of you all as a, yeah, as a, a visage. This sadness in his eyes turns to sudden joy. He looks down. Tatiana! It has been so long. Come, my love. Let us be together at last. Irina gasps and puts a hand on her heart. Um, Ismark looking confused by this. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> My beloved Sergei, 
In life, you were a prince and a man of faith. We were to be married long ago. Has this place called your spirit to me? She reaches forward, and her hand... And he reaches his hand, and, it's, and he grabs... Even though it's a visage, he's able to grab her hand and pull her up. To him. <clears throat> Yo, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> I know that trick. <laughs> Ismark steps forward. Uh, Irina, what... What's going on? Uh, and she turns around. Ismark. Ismark, my beloved brother, I... I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for taking care of me. Something in here... Happening. Can I use divine sense? Yes. I want to make sure that the Sergei is actually good. You sense good here. Uh, what's the range on that? 60 feet that I can see. You also sense there's an evil. In uh, room? in this room. with it you can tell where it's at uh, yeah i can detect a celestial fiend or undead with that's not in total cover which is pretty much the entirety of the uh total cover does that include invisibility uh no no actually i'd be able to tell roughly where they are but if they're in a, like, for example, if they are in a space, I'd be able to know the space, but that doesn't give me, that doesn't like neutralize any sort of advantage, disadvantage trying to hit them. Because effectively like a five foot block is still a big area of space. I can, but I'd be able to know that like they're in that area. You sense an evil behind you. I'm going to turn and put the sun sword forward and say we are not alone in here. Start looking this way. <laughs> Tauros would turn in that direction then. I'm going to clench my grip on the sword. Ismark is still stunned um, by this and doesn't immediately react, but... Irina embraces Sergei. Something here has awoken. And I think I can truly be at peace with Sergei. Now that I've found him. What do you mean you can be at peace? Strahd can Are no longer. Strahd cannot to harm me. Here? Are you we going to live here in this crypt? Oh, my it's kind of weird. No, I'm... I'm going to go beyond with Sergei. And we will be together. Is that what you truly want? I'm gonna eye Sergei down and like, Sergei... As a man of faith, are you able to guarantee her protection? He nods. What yes. Is, do you know of this evil in this room then? As I continue to kind of glare behind me. He looks at the sword. He looks ahead. It's him. He's here. Uh oh. Strahd is here. Uh-oh. <laughs> She's been stalking us this whole ready. time. I'm gonna glare. Guys rest. Monka. As. As he sees what is happening. Though you see the happiest couple you've ever seen together. 
you feel a tremendous shake in this room. And a deep, dark voice cries out, She is mine! And he appears uh, from his greater invisibility uh, right in front of Esmeral uh, Esmeralda and Thurkarel on the stairs is Strad von Zarevich himself. Uh. Oh, it's so tiny. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm glad I used that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you all. I should have known you all would bring her here. I should have stopped you sooner. Um, do I have an image of him? Where's my picture of Strahd? In case you all forgot what he looks like. <laughs> um, he looks at all of you. Do you have any idea what you have done? Do you have any idea bringing her to Sergei? What that will do? No, he yells. Uh, and he is, he is sure enough enraged, just as Van Richten said. Um, Sergei will take T uh, Tatiana and move away. Uh, and he'll move backward, actually, into the statue of him. And the two of them vanish. Okay. But that, that is, <clears throat> is what I think. Is gonna happen? Is that gonna happen now? Everybody roll initiative. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. Is that what you thought was gonna happen? No. No, that wasn't actually. You said that they moved into the statue. Yeah. I oh! That would be awesome, though. I know. <laughs> we were in the statue. Get a happening? few statues to yeah, get help statues the fight. <laughs> Our initiative rolls were really bad. By the yeah, way. this is looking bad. Of course, he gets it. <laughs> yeah, nice. Not? Strad rolls a twenty. Woo! At least it was on a natural twenty. <clears throat> oh yeah. Four. Let's roll the rolls a twenty. That's a higher die. Both even? plus four. Both yeah. Plus, yeah. They're alphabetical. <laughs> Oh, is I mean, this? I usually lean on the uh, who will first. No, I usually <laughs> give players the advantage. Both are NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. I would just do a roll off between them. Do, do, do a do a d20 each, and then that would just yeah. the block their initiative to the who goes ahead of the other. What I'm saying is, I usually favor the players. Usually, the oh, NPCs the that are five. allies of the players <laughs> count. But, I mean, you can do it however you want. Um. Oh, we're going to have to do this initiative thing again. Gosh yeah. darn it. I'll... Hey, I have mine in there. Oh, well, there it goes. I'm just going to redo the whole thing. There, I'll... This should force it onto the thing, at least. Oh, it didn't even do that. Well, uh, she's gone. Oh, that's annoying. I, every time you uh, add a thing, it it resets the number. There we go. Just gotta be quick. <laughs> yeah. It was just my timing was off, so every time I click on it, she would immediately enter someone in. Yeah. Reminder: there is a sixty-foot area of sunlight in here. Yes. The entire room is lit up. Like a damn sixty feet. Oh, yeah, Jesus. I, I, room. I lit this up as actions over the entire time, like while we were working. Well, yeah, I didn't realize it could be 60 oh, feet. It's a 30 foot bright, 30 foot dim. Oh, okay. 
But the front thing is, I have to actually have to spend an hour on it for every five feet. Starts at 15. So pretty much I did it right at the beginning as we were walking on this trip. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. You guys need to position so I can do wall of fire somehow. <laughs> Just by the way. I think Tira and I are good, right? Nismark? Well, I mean, just in mind for later in the fight, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> Once things okay. start moving. Uh. 10, 15. Sorry, I have to just look at something really quick. Um. Okay! Uh, yeah, we're good. Um, let me just change this to descending. Strahd, we'll go first. Oh. <laughs> the initiative order disappeared for me somehow. Oh, yeah, where'd it go? Oh, yeah, me too. That's weird. For me too. I don't know, it's back. Strahd, standing on the stairs. Let me just count something here. Uh, hold on. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. He's going to cast Fireball. Oh, no. Hmm. In the room. I'm just trying to figure out what Twenty-foot radius, right? Yeah, so I think he's gonna cast it on Ismark. <laughs> rip Ismark. <laughs> well, rip all of us, man. Yeah. He's going to cast it in the center because I was th he, I was thinking of having him cast it on the 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 tomb because he's pretty because he's pretty upset, but uh, uh, he's gonna cast it on Ismark. So everybody needs to make dexterity saving throws. Everybody take make dexterity saving throws. Sorhas and Ismark, you get plus two from me. Okay. I have advantage on seeing it. And I yeah, and can I, can I use evasion on this? Oh my god. Yes. That's awful. I have 12, so I'm going to get hit by it. Yeah, I'm going to use my Tides of Chaos, so I have advantage. The worst advantage roll I've ever seen from me. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a hey, hundred anyway. Hey. Can I use my inspiration to re-roll that? Use what to? Can I use my inspiration to re-roll that one? Do you have inspiration? Did you use it last? I don't know. I have one marked. I, I feel like you did use it. I think I remember you used one last session. Yeah, I think I remember that too. So. Ah, oh, hold on, sorry, I just accidentally popped this out. Uh, anybody who rolled below a... So actually, I'm just going to say, uh, Tira, Torhas, Esmeralda. All failed. Yep. Great start. Oh, why isn't it casting? Yeah. Hold on. Ah! Oh, okay, so just do that. Ooh. The rest, uh, so yeah, everybody, uh, and then Third Corral, you can evasion this. Um, everybody okay. who uh, pa failed takes 33. Did he cast this at third level? Um, He would have, yeah. Um, takes 33, and then uh, the rest of you take half of that. So that's that was 16, I think, right? Yeah. Dude, 33 was literally half of my current HP. <laughs> um, and actually, Esmeralda, she takes 33. Uh, just have to keep track of hers really quick. She's not looking good. <clears throat> Torhouse not looking super great either. 
And let me look at Ismark's health. So that's 16 he took. Okay, he's not looking good either. So that's... Sorry, let me just do this math really quick. Wait, is evasion seriously no damage if you succeed on the saving throw? Uh, yeah. Damn. Wow. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Frickin' rogues. I mean, the only thing is it does use your re reaction, but... Yes. Pretty minor for just being able to take no damage. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I have everybody's HPs written here. Um... <clears throat> Next up is Esmeralda. She is going to... Oh, yeah. I looked at her character sheet to see mm -hmm. what spell she had. Uh, does she have any third level spell slots left? She has one left. Uh, there's one spell I think that I saw on there that I think that she might want to cast. Magic circle or clairvoyance? I think I think magic circle was it. Yeah. It's a one minute casting time. Oh, is it? Damn. Yeah, I know. A lot of her higher level spells are all like long casting times, which is kind of annoying. Um, She is going to... Honestly, she doesn't have a lot of spell slots currently, so she's going to hold for now and just go straight for him because she's really mad and enraged. Uh, and she's going to go ahead and just uh, double attack him with her two weapons. Oops, why is this clicking twice? Is my mouse double clicking? Hold on, let me just try something. No, okay, that was weird. Um, okay, so the first one was 17. That hits. Uh, and then, oh, both of them hit. Okay. All right, so she does a little bit of damage to uh, good old Strahd. Um, <clears throat> Uh, okay. And that is her turn. Tira, you're up next. Um. I'm going to start by moving this way. Move my... Twenty over here. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to possibly bite me in the ass, but I'm going to drink one of the witch's potions. The one that the witch gave to you? Um, roll me a d2. I shouldn't really give it to us. <laughs> he more so took it from her. That's a two, I guess? One? Um. <clears throat> yeah, one, so... one, two. You drink it. So one of them was poisoned and one of them wasn't. Uh, oof. And uh, the one was the poisoned one that I had my eye oh. <laughs> Tira. Oof. You... So yeah, uh, basically when I had you guys roll, uh, there was a certain percent chance that would have one of them would have been poisoned, and one of the ones that Tira took was poisoned, one of them wasn't. Well, she had four, and I only took one of them. So I, th four. I thought you took... Who took two? Somebody took two. I think I took two, I think. Cause I wrote... I wrote Tira took two. Because uh, Gizzard... I have, I have I grabbed... I ain't touching that shit. Gizzard didn't I take. I... So one of you took one of... Like, because she offered to all of... She offered one to me. I gave her my poison. She died. So I already had one. And then Gizzard didn't take any. And I'm pretty sure Tira and Thurkrell both said that they took one. And I took the other one. Because no one else wanted it. <clears throat> okay, so you have the other one then. 
because I have my uh, my D and D Beyond says I have two. You okay. pretty much print the pride at her. Okay, so then um, yours Tira is a normal uh, gen uh potion of healing. That would have ended. Uh, what that's two D four plus two. Yes. Take it. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. What else do you want to do on your turn? Uh. Well, I mean, that's an action. Of why do I always feel I like taking a potion as a bonus action? Most people do do bonus actions. Yeah. Or drinking a potion. Yeah. I would say that it is a bonus action to take a potion. Otherwise, I would have jumped at the train. Excuse me. Uh, I will then just tell this. I think he cut out there. I'm just checking if I have any other options here. Okay. Well, uh I'm going to cast Bless, and it's going to be on Esmeralda, Thurkarel, uh, Torhaz. Sorry, what? Bless. Um, oh, Bless. Bless. <clears throat> Yeah. Hashtag Cut out for me. So one d four on attack and saving, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Cool. Blast. Oh, I forgot to roll one other thing. How many people die instantly this turn? No, it's for Strahd's wild magic. Um, for That'd his minions. <laughs> Whenever Strahd appears okay. in a location that isn't his tomb. He has wolves with him. Uh, 17 okay, wolves. wolves. Are bad. Just kidding. I'm not worried about wolves. Um, okay. Uh, Gizzard, you're up next as you do see some wolves crawling into the room behind him. Okay. Uh, how many <clears throat> wolves approximately? Uh, dang. Very squished wolves. Seven. Seven wolves. Okay. Gizzard, can you do what he just did with the big boom? Not quite. No, I don't know that trick. Uh, this is where Esmeralda is. Like, I want to get the most use out of Wall of Fire. I don't know if, like, casting it where he's at now is a good idea. So, what I'm thinking is, I mean, I don't know how many sp spells he can cast. Um, so, my two ideas are to either, like, cast it surrounding us, so that he has to, like, walk through to get to us, and then we can kind of fire out from inside of the Wall of Fire, although it is opaque, but it's opaque for him as well. Or, alternatively, I could cast it where he's at now, and kind of force him into the room. Does anybody have any input? <laughs> if it's around us, I won't be of much use. I'm just going to say <laughs> assign, yeah, assign, assign the numbers to an intelligence check for Gizzard. 
<laughs> not that all that smart. Well, yeah, but this is more so... Let me try to figure out the best way. Because it's like 20... Or 60 feet long, too. So just casting it like on this 20-foot stretch seems like a waste as well. Yeah. I mean, we could lure him... But that might also like, take out some of the wolves, right? Yeah. That's kind of what I'm hoping. Or wait, let's see here. Cause I can can you walk back? To go. And like hold action so when he crosses, you just go poof. Right? Um, I could. Um, let me see here. Although Esmeralda has already taken her turn, so she's just there. Yeah, that's true. Alternatively, I could cast Lightning Bolt this turn. Maybe that's a better idea. I think that's a good idea. I would move so I don't hit Esmeralda though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to kind of look to see how many would hit. Um, yeah. I think this turn, alternatively, I could cast Stinking Cloud too. I haven't actually cast it ever. Shut down time. Actually. Oh, we should be keeping uh, count of the initiative numbers too. So this is initiative round one. Oh no. Um, yeah, you know what? I am going to move to here and cast Lightning Bolt just straight down there. So okay. hopefully hitting Strahd and at least two wolves, I guess. Uh, Can you go a little bit further and cast at an angle between Therpharel, Esmeralda, Strahd, and that close back? Uh, I mean... I don't know if I want to get closer though. <laughs> um, so let's see, how far did I move? I moved from I moved like 15 feet. I also don't want to like group up. So I'm probably gonna move like over here once I'm done casting it. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna cast it straight down there. So DC 15 or dexterity, or they take 34 points of damage. Hey, I rolled better than Strahd. He only rolled 33. What a sucker. The wolves. He's literally a sucker. A 17, sucker. yeah, 17 points of damage if they fail. Or if they succeed, sorry. The wolves succeed. So they take 17 points of damage. Okay, they all die. <laughs> <laughs> As their hit points are 11. Oh man, you guys are really pissing off Strahd. Good. <laughs> um, and let's see if Strahd fails. He passes. So uh, he he takes how much? Seventeen points. Okay. And then I'm gonna back up to there, and that is gonna be the end of my turn. In case you wanted to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm like sorry. <laughs> In case you want to be reminded of Strahd. Um, Torhas, you're up next. Wait, did the other wolves die too? All the wolves died. Oh, wait. Oh, God. I cast it like straight. Oops. Straight down here. So, so uh. I probably would have hit. Two? Yeah, maybe two. Unless you're feeling generous. <laughs> I'm not feeling generous. Uh. Okay. I will place these back on the map. So there should be, yeah, five wolves left. Uh, Torhas, if you want to, uh... Yeah, I'm just trying to think what to do. Okay. Well, I'm gonna rage. That's a given. Um... I'm reading something real quick. Okay, I'm gonna move. 
Don't forget to like use your Here. reaction. Yeah, that that's what I'm checking. I mean, we also don't want to group up either. If he's got more fireballs. Yeah, but I have if I like, I want to guard. Her, I have to be around here. Um, does this work with? Where is it? Why is it not showing up? I'm actually going to. You're blessed, also. Yeah, I'm actually going to. I'm going to use my menacing feet. So it's technically. This is kind of weird. Hold on. So it's technically the attack action, but I'm replacing it. And I'm going to attempt to demoralize Strahd. <laughs> Fuck, what do I say? I'm so bad at this. Um. Let's see, you, when you take the attack action, you can replace one attack. So you can still make one attack against him. I with your don't want to get too much. I don't want to get too much closer, though. Because <clears throat> especially if you want to cast something, I'd be blocking you. Right? Unless you go well, here, I guess. I, yeah. I, I literally yeah. only... I don't have any more lightning bolts left. <laughs> that oh, okay. was the only one I could cast. Can I... I have no spell slots, man. Okay. So I'm going to go here. I can cast Firewall and Shield once, and that's it. Uh, Tracy, Strahd's kind of in between. I forgot to do this. Where's... Uh, yeah, I would say he's at the one in front of Esmeralda. Okay. Uh... Um, yeah, so I'm here. I'll go ahead and make a reckless attack. Sorry. Almost showed the wrong weapon. Uh, I didn't see that before. Uh, it's a 23 to hit. Okay, that so hits. Have... Oh, it's yeah, 9 damage. Have... I forgot the rage modifier. Okay. And then my second attack will be the intimidation. Uh, Tauros is kind of, kind of like puff out this cold air through his mouth as he kind of smacks him with the axe. <clears throat> you could barely even afford to marry, and you think you can fight? Pathetic. Um, and I have to now roll intimidation against his insight. Okay. So just a wisdom check for him, probably. Unless and that's a 24. So he is now frightened if he did not get any bonuses from that. Uh, um, he's going to use his legendary resistance. Fuck you. <laughs> Fucking strong. Well, one round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he laughs at you. It will not work here. You are a slave to Van Richten. And you will die here as well. That this is like the the emperor fight. <laughs> your overconfidence is your weakness. Your faith in your friends is yours. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Which if that check failed, which it did because of legendary resistance, the target can't be frightened by you for an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, third curl. That's still a legendary resistance now. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm going to chuck my. Um, holy water at him. Okay. So, what do I roll for that? Roll me a. Just roll me. A dex? A, yeah, a dexterity check, dex, yeah. Or an attack roll, range attack roll. Like a dex attack roll. Yeah. Okay, just dex check? Yeah. 17? And does Bless modify that? I think mm -hmm. a 17 hit earlier anyway. Uh, yes. It should. And technically you have to attack you're doing, because you're throwing something. Yeah. Okay. So improvise attack. 20 acid. What? Um, yeah. 
I, he actually doesn't have to roll for anything. Um, it just takes 20 acid damage. Uh, oh. Okay. Yep. Nice. Um. And what was the roll for that? Is it just, wait, is it just flat 20? Yep. Okay. Water is a powerful thing against an undead. <clears throat> yeah. And then, um, so I guess I still have, that's my action, but I have movement and bonus action. Yep. Yeah, you would. Um, so I guess just bonus action, draw my regular weapons, and move up to um, be an extra strong. Okay. So I would have the rapier in one hand and a regular dagger in the other hand. Let's see. The rapier isn't a light weapon, by the way, so you can't dual wield with it. I have the dual wielder feet, though. In that case, ignore me. <laughs> ignore me. In that case, never mind. And it is finesse, though, so. Yeah. Okay, um... Is Mark is also going to run up and try to attack and misses. <clears throat> um, all right, back to Strahd's turn. Um, you probably want to roll for the wolves, or maybe just add them to the end. Would be the oh, yeah, where are they? Oh, oh right. I I did roll for them. Uh yeah, I'll just 17, I'll just add them to the end of the initiative. I'm going to give them a 2. Uh, all right. The wolves <laughs> are 12 minus 10. <laughs> Um, the wolves are going to, three of them are going to attack Ismark. Strength save. Yeah, if they hit, and also they oh. should get advantage on these attacks because of pack tactics. Yep. That's a lot of rolls. So, hit... Hit. Miss. Uh. Eight. Plus four. Is. Twelve. So. Twelve damage. And then. They have to. He has to roll. So DC 11 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. So he, his mark will roll strength. He is knocked prone. The mark on him. Really living up to that name, is Mark. Ah, is Mark. Mm, nice. Well, at least he's taking all this damage for you guys. Uh, Torhas, he, one of them does attack you and has pack yeah. tactic. Misses. And then one bites you, Thurkarel. That one shouldn't have advantage. Oh my god, there's so many rolls. I'm losing track. The last one should not have advantage. Okay. Because he's not near allies. Okay, so they all miss. Um, Wait. Okay. Now to Strahd. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, this is a new round too. I don't... Uh, round two. You mentioned you had to keep yep. track of that. Yeah. So Strahd is going to use one of his uh, legendary actions. He's going to move right to you, Tira. Oops. Oh, shit. Oop. Wrong thing. <laughs> and is this like a teleport? Uh, yes. So he can move without provoking opportunity attacks. Nice. <clears throat> Right. 
and remember blinding sunlight oh, yeah. he's going to try to strike the sword out of your hand uh by the hilt Actually, no, he's just going to take a bite, bite out of you. Um, I'm just trying to think how... You know, technically, he would take radiant damage from this, but he's going to do it anyway. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Um, okay. Well, it's just one of them. It's not both of them. No, it's, I think it's both. Or is it, oh no, it is both. It's, it's both of them. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. But you take oh, half God. of the necrotic because you're a... Yeah. <laughs> Still a lot of damage. I'm take 20 just dead. from the slashing. Still think I'm dead. Are you still up from that? Uh, 36 that? total damage. So it's 12 plus 8. Yeah. 20 and then half of 32. So 36. Yeah, it's a total of 36, yeah. Yeah, I'm down. Jesus then he's going to take a bite out of you. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> so that's an automatic Go death crit. save. So, yeah. you, Tira, you take two death saves. Yeah. Or death, uh, two failed saves. Um, uh, he, he is tired of you. I do not want to see this one rise ever again. How much radiant did he just take? He took 20 <laughs> radiant damage. Okay. Did he so, seem phased by it? It did hurt him, yes. Uh, you guys did see some of the... Shut off, by the way, as soon as I go down. Yeah. Okay, so he did, regardless, he took the 20 radiant. It looks like it did sting him a lot, but he kind of, like, winced through the pain of this radiant damage to attack and strike Tira and uh, knock her unconscious. Uh, the sun blade falls to the ground. He kind of kicks it to the side, uh, and it loses its uh, sunlight. And that's... And he's going to use his one ability that he has that he can use once per day, Children of the Night, to call upon... Uh, actually, does he want... Yes, he will. To call upon... 2d4 swarms of bats. Uh-oh. Okay. Dang. So he calls upon 7 swarms of bats to uh, also surround... Hmm... Uh, one of them is going to surround you guys up with the wolves, and one is going to fly in and surround Gizzard. So let me just grab a thing for them. They will go around uh, you, Thurkarel. <clears throat> and that's his turn. Esmeralda's up. She is going to... Oof, I don't know what she's going to do. Uh, she... Oof, surrounded by these wolves, which is really annoying, but she just saw Strahd move past her. She kind of wants to go for him. Um... You're so dead. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I just got deleted, so. <laughs> yeah, that crit. Uh. I get one more fail. I'm dead, dead. Yep. Uh, sorry, spells. Why did I take two death saves? Because crit. Yeah, he bit you while you were down. If a. Uh... No, no, I know. The, I know the bite while down. That only counts as one. Uh, because you are unconscious, it counts as an automatic crit, mm -hmm. which it, whenever you're downed is two fails. Rip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, if you took damage from, like, a fireball or something like that, then it would just be one save, but because mm -hmm. it's a melee attack, it's two. Oops. Um, I think Esmeralda is going to cast Mirror Image. Three, I, I just want to make sure I know what this does correctly. Three illusory duplicates of yourself appear in the space until the spell ends. Basically, yeah. Anytime a creature attacks you, uh, you roll a d20, and then they have to roll uh, higher than something. Um, okay. Um, and then if they roll too low, then it hits one of the duplicates instead of you. So I think she's going to do that to distract the wolves. And then I think she can move without having them move to invoke no attack of opportunity. Or at least they'll have disadvantage, I think. That's what... Well, so, yeah. So if they're going to attack, roll a d20. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Actually, if you have three duplicates, you must roll a six or higher to change the attack's target. So actually, they would uh, manage to hit the correct thing. Oh, okay. So they, they would make an attack against her. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh. All right. It takes, she'll take six piercing. And strength save, too. Uh, I don't know. For the attack of opportunity... Pretty sure it's just whenever they make an attack. Okay. Um. Uh, so many stat blocks. Where did Esmeralda go? Good God. Did I just lose her stat block? Fudge. Hold on. Where is she? Oh my God. So many things to keep track of. <laughs> this is really. So she has this to is roll. the real reason Tracy wants to kill us. <laughs> What's that lock? I I don't know how DMs do it. I despise this. Um, yeah, Killed she's knocked. One. She's knocked prone. I mean, technically, she could still get up using half of her movement, but. Okay, she's yeah, she's gonna get up, but she can't move anymore. Um, all right, I guess that's all she'll do. Uh, Tira, roll me a death saving throw. GG, boy. Oh, boy. Good GG. luck. Come on, net 20. All right. Oh, you passed. You gotta pass. Whew. I just gotta do that two more times. Or just get a net 20, man. Just get a net 20. Well, you know how Tira rolls. Uh, I have a potion of healing if it gets to my turn. Still yeah, alive. but you'd have to get to me and not die to Strahd. I can take the disengage action as a bonus action. As a rogue. Um, Gizzard, you're up next. Okay. Um, I am going to cast Wall of Fire now. Um, which I think I can kind of place it wherever I want. Uh, so it's 60 feet long. <clears throat> um, let's see. Yeah, so it's basically 60 feet long. I think I can kind of curve it around, I assume. Tell me if I'm wrong. Like, if you disagree with that. But... Um... Because otherwise, I mean, I'm probably just going to cast it something like this, but then curve it so that it continues north a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So something like 5, 10, 15, 20, 
25, I will say there, 25, 30, 35, 40. I think it goes something like that, maybe. By the way, where did the sword get kicked to, Ruff? Um, oh, yeah, before I cast it. Probably, like, here. Okay. Okay. On the correct side of the wall of fire. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to cast wall of fire uh, about like that. So, Strahd needs to make a dexterity saving throw again. Um, He's going to use another legendary action. Or resistance to resist. Okay, well, he still will take half of that damage then, so 10 points of fire damage. Okay. Um, let me see here. Can I post to a thing in chat? Or is it just... I'll just copy-paste. You must construct additional pylons. Pylons. Um, so let's see here. So I think whenever he starts his turn as well, he will uh, have to roll again. Okay. Um, and I assume it's the side away from Chira that deals damage? Uh, yes, that is correct. So anything on the left-hand side, uh, if anybody starts their turn in that area... Uh, within 10 feet of it, they'll take the damage as well, but... And then I also have me? bats on me, too. No, on the other side of the wall. So oh, you're okay. fine. Like this? Yeah. And I also have bats on top of me, too. You do. Um, I'm going to use my bon bonus action to use Hungry Jaws to try to bite hey. one of the bats. <laughs> nice. Natural 20, why does this thing always yeah. work? Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. That I also gained Healing. two temporary hit points. Nice. And I do eight oh. points of damage to the swarm of bats. Okay. Probably halved, right? Yeah. But hey, I'll take it. Still damage. Okay. I mean, those two temp hit points were a lot more impactful at level one than <laughs> level yeah. seven, but I'll take anything. Same with like my breath. Um, hey man, I was yeah. four or five HP away from surviving that hit from Strahd. Yeah. That fireball um, didn't kill you. But I guess, yeah, I'm just gonna uh, stay here. That's gonna be the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, Torhas, you're up next. Hmm. So I'm going to make a Hold on, I'm like reading to make sure I'm not messing this up. Um uh, yes, okay. I'm going to directly see attack with my first hand axe plus one against the wolf here. Okay. Why is it not? It's not doing advantage anymore but yeah eight misses and then i'm making my second attack with the normal one it's working on this one that's weird the magic weapon doesn't actually have the roll not 20 that okay. one is just that's four damage it's not eight okay <clears throat> because you don't apply uh mod on second weapon well, it didn't. It rolled just a 1d6 and you rolled a 3. So it's 8 and then plus your rage damage, too. No, on the 5. The 1d6 plus 4. There is no plus 4. Oh, that's right. Sorry. So it's so 4 and so it's 6. Is it damage? And I'm blessed, actually. Right? Well. Still? No. It's gone. You're dead? Oh, yeah. Okay. He's unconscious. Okay. Oh, it's a concentration, right? Concentration yeah. for one more. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Six damage. Okay. All right. Uh, that one's still up. Um. I think that's it. Okay. Um. Next up is Thurkrell. Okay. 
to give a potion to, to be, force feed a potion to someone, is that an action or a bonus action? Uh, usually what I roll it, yeah, usually what I roll is to drink a potion yourself as a bonus action. Bonus action. action. Give it to somebody else. It's an action. I would yeah. agree. That's what I roll. So I will use my bonus action to disengage. Okay. Get over Tira. All right. And I'm going to force feed her uh, the potion I got from the witch. Does, hope it's a good one. does disengage... Um, it means you can't be attacked of opportunity. By just one thing or everything? Everything, yeah. Disengage uses a, pretty much uses up one of your slots to l of let you avoid any attack of opportunity against you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Effectively, it doesn't provoke a yeah. react period. <clears throat> yeah, which um, usually yeah it takes your entire action, but because rogues. But rogues can do it. <laughs> because rogues. Yeah, uncanny. Yeah, or not uncanny dodge. Yeah, cunning action. Sorry. Okay. Um. Yeah, you're able to uh, administer the health potion, and it is a health potion. Um. Roll me two d four plus two. Uh, six points of healing. Okay. So, uh, Tira, you are uh, brought back to life with six points of healing. Oh, cancels everything out, right? Saving life? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, you get reset. reset. All right. And I'll say, Strahd, you have to deal with me first. And before nat 20s again. <laughs> he looks down at both of you and smiles smugly. Um, through the flames. Fire. Yeah, while on fire in fucking Sephiroth. Just like... <laughs> yeah, basically. I'm sorry. Nice. Um, alright. Oh, yeah, you're not playing, like, boss music, Tracy. Yeah, yeah. where's our boss? Takata. You fools thought this was the boss fight. <laughs> oh. Uh, Ismark is going to just try to deal with these wolves. Um... Uh, okay, he does hit, and I'm assuming he stands up too. Oh uh, yeah, and then he'll use his other attack and misses. So he destroys one of them, but misses the other. I forgot, I forgot to do that earlier. Uh, wild magic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a thirteen though. So okay. All right, so Strahd is up, and he has to... Oh, where are the swarm of bats? Although... Oh, hold on. Mm -hmm. Unless, unless JC, you want to just decide that I roll on it after I'd cast that spell. It's a little bit late now, though. Uh, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, the bats will actually swarm to you, Torhas, and okay. um, try to bite. Miss. Oh, wait, which one is Why it? is that going? Why is yeah, you're doubling. Thing... Not 20, so it hits. Uh, yeah. So... Wait, is it... And I'll say the second one is uh, for you, Gizzard. Oh, okay. 12 misses. Okay. <clears throat> is that two sets of piercing damage? No, one is uh if they're below half health. So take the one on the, the left. The first one? Yeah. Okay. So I take four, yeah, four yeah. damage because I'm raging. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Okay, and now Strahd. Um, go back unconscious, Tira. I'm still down on the ground. Well, yeah, but you're conscious. Yeah, he might not know I'm conscious. Come on. So he has to roll a dexterity saving throw? Yes, yes, yes. Roll another dex save. I don't know why I'm, this, this thing is double. I don't know if it's DMD Beyond that's double clicking or something. Okay, so he takes uh, nine points of fire damage. Okay. <clears throat> okay. He is going to... Grab the... Grab the sun blade and throw it. Rip. Where is he throwing it? He's going to throw it... Into the fire? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So he's gonna just... Uh, I'll just have him roll a, a athletics check. Um... Oh, 
Why double click? Uh, okay, so he throws it. Seem to be on or something. Well, I have like 80 tabs open, so I don't know. Oh, that, that might be might, it. Yeah, it might be part of it. Maybe. Um, then he's going to move to you, Thurkarel. So I'm going to say that was an action to do that, but he's going to use um, another legendary action to attack you. That's two actions and one resistance? Two resistance right. and two actions, oh. actually. What was the second resistance? He resisted the wall of the initial wall of fire. Oh, the first wall, yeah, that's right. And then he, <clears throat> yeah. Did I see where he threw it? Uh, you did kind of see him throw it over you. Gizzard, you would have saw it. He threw it, uh, let me see, 5, 10, 15. He probably threw it, like, right in here. And he's going to grab you, Thurkarel. Um, and he's going to grab you by the neck and pull you up uh, and cast Blight. Um, okay. Can I use my reaction to give him Spirit Shield? Uh, can you give it to somebody else or just yourself? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a reaction Okay. to reduce them by 2d6. Okay. Um, roll me a constitution save. Uh, Third Corral. Oh, oh, God. Well, first a question. Are you a plant or magical plant? No. <laughs> okay. If he isn't spirit. <laughs> well, if he was, then Oof, you don't get didn't. a saving throw and you just die, so... He did not roll that well. And then you can roll 2d6. Third curl. Seven? Yeah, so 26. Reduce the damage by seven. So, 26 damage? Mm-hmm. For an eight what, kind, eight? what kind of damage? Really ne uh, necrotic. Yeah, he rolled two ones. Yeah, he didn't roll that well. So I'm at 33. Okay. Oh, looking great. Um, all right. Uh, Esmeralda will attempt to move and try to strike him. Um... Okay. 20. That one misses, but she does do 11 piercing to him. Okay. And Tira, you're up. Um, I am going to use half of my movement to get up. Um... Then I'm going to back off a little bit to try to get some space uh, over to here and use uh, Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. Well. Okay, so that's six. And then can I try to look, also try to look for the um, hilt at all? Romy, uh... I guess I would say you don't even have to really roll an investigation check, but it is in, f in fire right now. S yeah, well, my question would be, would you have changed your turn if... Because I can actually drop concentration at any time. I was just looking that up. Um, probably after Strahd, yeah, threw it into the fire, I would have immediately dropped concentration. On okay, myself. so it's gone then. So yeah, you see it in plain sight, so you are able to grab it, Tira. Yeah, I will grab it and just hold it while I'm ready. Okay. okay my, just to give you my rationale behind it, um, 
if I couldn't pick it up, it determines what I do next. Because if I can't get to the hilt, I would have charged my flail up with channel divinity. So it's a one or the other. Okay. Gizzard, you're up next. Yeah. Um. I have literally nothing right now. Although, these bats on top of me. Um. Oh, actually, he would have regained twenty hit points. I forgot to add that because the sun sword was off. At the start of his turn, so I'm just gonna add that. Basically, took back that holy water damage. Yeah, or that radiant damage he took from knocking Tira out. Or that, yeah. So I again have sun around me for fifteen feet. Yeah, I'm just gonna cast grass or shocking grasp on the bats. Okay. Now, 17 to hit. That hits. Nine points of lightning damage. Okay. They're still there, but they did take uh, some damage. Uh, and that's all I'm going to do for now. They're not wearing metal armor, the bats. Oh, yeah. They, are they wearing metal armor? They are not. <laughs> oh, okay. They are Batman. <laughs> Is Strahd wearing metal armor? He is not. Oh, okay. Or actually, technically, because they shouldn't get a reaction because I hit with Shocking Grasp, I'm going to actually move a little bit. Five, ten. I'm just going to move over here further away from people. Okay. That's all. Torhas, you're up. Hmm. <laughs> Would it be an action to help Ismark get up, or did he already get up and there's things still on him? Oh, right, he's, he got up. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't know if he got knocked back down. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just make another... Attack on the wolf in front. God damn. And then... That one. That's a 24, and it is 5 damage to the wolf here. Okay, that takes uh, it out. Seven damage, sorry, with rage. Oh. That takes it out. Okay. Oh, wait, that uh, first one was the damage roll. What the hell? Oh, yeah, look, yeah. Six, six slashing. Wait, why... that, that, mean, that means I've been rolling damage for it in the first place. Why is it not? Not attack. It's not attack rolling. It's weird. Here, I'll roll a normal one and just add plus one to it. That's why you can't hit with it. Okay. Yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah, there you go. Like, yeah. So, can this attack be my second attack then? Because the first one didn't exist. Yes. Okay, so this was against the swarm of uh, bats okay, on so me. Five and that slash. would be seven damage uh, slashing, but three. <clears throat> or wait, no, it would be four damage. Because five slashing, half, two, two rage. Okay. <clears throat> and that's my turn. Can't do anything else. Okay, Thurkarel, you're up. Strahd. Actually, I guess I would have moved with the birds to here. Or, whoops, bats to here. Though I said Strahd grabbed you for dramatic flair, you're not grappled or anything. You could. I was wondering. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I will try to stab him with my rapier. Okay. Roll the hit. That hits. Nice. And Esmeralda's within five feet, right? Uh, she is, yes. Okay. She went to attack nice. him. So. Uh, Ooh, that is a lot of sneak attack. Piercing damage, and it is magic. Since it's yeah. a plus one. Right here. You rolled three sixes and a one on that sneak attack damage. And that's a plus one rapier, right? Yes. Yeah, that's magical. Thurkarel. How do you want to do this to Strahd? Uh, Stab him through his non-existent heart, since we killed his heart <laughs> upstairs. You stab Strahd with this rapier through the heart. He looks down at you. He's taken aback by you striking him with this blow. He takes a breath even though he doesn't need to because he's a vampire. You just feel his, his chest get heavy and tight. 
and then he dissipates. His body completely dissipates into a mist. This mist form appears and where is he? He's right where, here. What? I'd say he's within 20 feet from you. So that's sunlight. That's sunlight? That's right. God damn it. Yeah. 30 foot. When I, went I thought it was 15 on. feet. 15 bright, 15 dim. But still sunlight. <laughs> Okay, um, I, I'm sorry. I thought I did not know he was within sunlight at this point. Um, yeah, no, I figured that's why I would tell you. I need to think about this because Strahd would just not die like this. He does have. He had reinforcements that he was going to call. Just give me one moment. Um, nope, he's dead. <laughs> There's nothing okay. he can do. <laughs> um, uh, you really did that much damage to him? Yeah. You guys are I all we doing any damage. Yeah, you guys did a lot. Of... I mean, he's taken. 20 radiant damage. It took a lot just to try to take me out. Like, yeah. He ate that in the face to try to kill me. Yeah. Because if Thurkaral wasn't hitting him and I was hitting him with a sunblade, that's even worse. So oh, it shit. makes sense why he would do that. Hold on. Wait, so does he like die die from that? I thought there was more to him. He I was have a feeling that's not the end. <sighs> he was supposed to. But technically, this doesn't work if he's in sunlight. Oh, wait. So we oh, actually just killed him? <laughs> wait, did we actually just kill him? I know. I, everybody was like... I'm confused. <laughs> There's no way. That... There, no, he is supposed to assume a misty form and retreat to his lair. Oh, when he goes to zero? Yep. Yeah. And he's in sunlight? He is... Yeah. Wait. Well, you're saying me going Wait. to pick up the sword was the clutch play? Me dropping the, yeah, wall of yeah, fire. Yeah, no, you dropped the wall definitely a clutch play, but me picking up the sword, going to pick up the sword instead of trying to yeet myself at him. <laughs> Tracy's probably like, what the fuck do I do? I'm, I'm literally, George! I'm literally <laughs> sitting here with my arms in the air going, praise the sun. I, I'm sitting here, arms... Because there's no head way, head. the what? only way this could work is if he's, but legendary resistance, it doesn't work like on things like no. sneak attack. No. So, like, freaking Thurkrell did like 30 <laughs> damage to him. Yeah. Yeah, I did like a total of like 20 damage. Like, I did nothing to him. I didn't even touch him yet. Well, I, I touched him at the beginning, but like. Yeah, like, I really not feel like damage. we have not done right, that much damage to him. He regenerated only once because he was in sunlight the entire time. He's been in sunlight yeah. this entire time. He has and not been able to. Time, Except for one round. And, and then we been, just splattered he's him. He's been taking damage from the sunlight, too? Right? No. Or no? No, he just can't regain hit points. He can't... He took damage because he came directly on. Technically, to with sunlight hypersensitivity, he takes 20 radiant damage at the start of his turn, and he has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks, which I wasn't even doing. So we should have almost killed him faster than we did. 
<laughs> more importantly, if he if he came up to me while I had the sunblade fully charged, he wouldn't have critted. In theory. Oh, that's true. But, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. you could roll two nat twenties, but <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, ha that happened in the other campaign when Wow. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's it's. I mean, that's that's a fair DM buff though. Like, if you wanted to buff them up, because we are relatively mm -hmm. strong, and we would have. Um, I mean, I still feel like we have not dealt that much okay. damage. Like, how much damage did people deal to him? Like, there, girl, you attacked him like twice, right? I hit him a couple of times. Uh, I hit him with the I hit him with the holy water for twenty. Yeah. So and seven. I think this is the first time I stabbed him. Seven damage. Nine damage. 13, 7, 17. Some, well, who did 17? I think I dealt like 30 total with my spells. Yeah. Nine. Did it help that we killed the heart beforehand? Yes. The heart takes away a significant amount of HP from him. There you go. Oh, in that case, then, yeah. Okay. Kind of about that we part. Actually, yeah. so we actually <laughs> wasn't at full strength when we were. Playing. He was not at full strength, no. You guys did a game. lot to take him out. Okay. So he was legit. I like how instead of like celebrating, we're all just puzzled. Honestly, I'm like that I, happens. And I don't understand like I, so you you're can you remind me with the sunblade that you just touching it activates the sunlight or would you have yeah, had I to so when I pick up the sunblade and turn it on, right? Mm -hmm. It starts at so originally when we when we walked into the cat or the crypts right to begin with, um, beginning today, I said I'm going to activate the sun sword and then I'm gonna spend the next couple while we're walking increasing the range. I can increase it to a max of um the of the, the, the bright sunlight well, to a it takes a bonus action to cause it to appear though. But I think you had a bonus action to use. Well, I picked up the sword and activated it at the start. Like, when I yeah, picked it. Yeah, so. Because you use your action to cast Cure Wounds on yourself, and then, yeah, you could have walked yeah. over, picked it up, and used your bonus action to turn it off. Yeah. Like, effectively, I, like, picked it up to equip it, to be ready to go with it. Yeah. So I turned, like, but when you start up the sword, it's 15 feet, and then it's a full action to increase it 5 feet to a max of 30, and then... It's um, whatever the whatever the bright is, the dim sunlight goes an additional same distance. So it starts off 15 feet bright, 15 feet dim. Yeah. I like, yeah, I, I'm not even like trying to do any DM fudging or anything. Like he straight up, this would have defeated him. However, he had well, one thing that he was going to call right before he died that would have helped him, but I couldn't do anything because Thurkarel, like... <laughs> deleted? Yeah. Oh my god, Thurkarel. How much damage was overkill from sneak attack? Um, check uh, Discord really quick, Tracy. Read the second line. Doesn't matter too much about the first at this point, but... Uh, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to. <laughs> I mean, I got a really lucky roll on that sneak attack with three. Yeah. So, there, there is a good point of... The sunlight is dim sunlight and not exactly... Oh, man. I feel like this is, like, such a, like, dumb technical thing. It's a, it's a ruling. You can choose to do it it's that way or not. It's however you choose to rule it at this point. Yeah. Yeah. You are the DM. Yeah. I just gave you a suggestion. You can choose to ignore it or you can choose to use it. Yeah. Um, so I would say if you were you within... consider, though, that previously we have been considering it as full of sunlight... And that would be a lot of interactions that we'd have to be kind of retconning, and that might change uh, a lot of things. Not really. Well, all the different vampire spawns that we fought. Yeah, no. but that's the difference between a vampire spawn versus like a vampire lord. Like, I, yeah, you could rule that as well. 
Like, I would just yeah, the difference between caution. the dim light and the bright light. I think all of the other things have been within the bright light, but because he's Tira is 15 feet away. I'm literally on the frame, so it's up to Tracy. Yeah. Like, like if I was five feet closer, it's a much more cut and dry thing, but I'm not. Yeah. So, oh, wait, 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 wait. Could he use a... Legendary actions are taken at the end of... So, could... Could he have taken a legendary yeah. action before Thurkarel attacked? Um, technically, if he, he used it at the end of uh, Torhaz's <laughs> turn, yeah. If he used a legendary action at the end of Torhaz's turn, as long as he had the points to do so. Wait, to do what? To move. I, I don't know. To misty step. I feel like that's. But I mean, like, yeah, behind. it would be, yeah, he would choose to have done that before Theracorel had done anything, so. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I, I feel like we're kind of grasping a bit. We are kind of grasping a bit. So, like, make sure he lives more, and I'm like, eh. Well, honestly, you guys defeated Strahd. However, he did have reinforcements coming, and you haven't defeated them. And we still have to deal with these. I just anyway. feel like you guys dying to something that isn't Strahd is kind of... But it is the spirit of Strahd. Also D&D. Yeah. &D. So, you do have two more. Uh, so, there are reinforcements that do appear. So, we will continue. You guys are not out of combat. Strahd is okay. nixed right now. So, there's no mist next to me. There is still a mist, <clears throat> but it is not his mist form. Okay. Um, so I still have my bonus action. Okay. So I will go up to uh, this swarm of bats, and I will try to stab it with my dagger. Okay. 18. That hits. Okay. For one piercing damage. Nice. Okay. Um. Got got to balance out the thirty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you dealt a total of thirty-one damage that turn. That's like the um the fun fact of Wayne Gretzky and his brother are like tied or have that most points scored, and Wayne Gretzky oh. has like. I don't even know how many, but his brother had like two or something like that. Okay, um, Ismark will go ahead and also attack the swarm of bats. Um, 12. Okay, so he is able to take out the swarm of bats. Okay, um, and then the other swarm is gonna go follow you. Um. Ah! I keep... Alright. Alright. <laughs> Okay, uh, and they will go to bite. Not the bubbles. Uh, 11? Ah, misses. Okay. All right. Uh, top of the round. <clears throat> Straw. Oh, wait. <laughs> so, um, at the top of yeah, the so. stairs, you see... Is our good friend? Two things. Rahadin. Yep. Looking down in horror. And you also see... Hey, buddy. <laughs> kind of look Rahadin. Are you again? Oh, 
Oh, where's my image? A moment. Just so you know, guys, I am currently pondering if I need to kill myself with the sun sword of, uh, after this is over. Yeah. I thought about that. Yeah. You see Bucephalus ready oh, to. Good. Bucephalus, the sword. Or the sword. The, oh. the nightmare. The horse. Yeah, yeah. Who is the ready to, to swoop Strahd away. And there is no Strahd to be seen. The two stand, stare down at you, looking. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and roll their initiatives. Uh, maybe we'll actually stop here as I try to need to think <laughs> contemplate my life. Yeah, that works. I think that's fine. It is almost <laughs> eight o'clock here, so it's usually whenever we end up. So uh, let me just throw them on the uh, on the board here, and then. <clears throat> all right i'm gonna go use the restroom really quick i'll be right back okay i feel like we need to recut all of these episodes with uh it's always sunny uh music and title mm -hmm. cards. <laughs> the gang absolutely destroys straw <laughs> I wouldn't say absolutely, mostly just because yeah. Scott wrecked our faces too. Okay, Bucephalus rolled a five. And Raha didn't roll a 13. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, we will um, go ahead and stop there. As I go sob to myself quietly. I don't think it's really a sobbing situation. So it's a hard encounter. It kind of goes all over the place. I feel you like... We're also I in this place earlier than we're supposed to be. Weird shit's going to happen. I feel like my weakest point really is combat. And I really feel like I failed Strahd in many, many ways here. I feel like he was supposed to wreck you guys and he didn't. I mean, that's a, um, that's a fair play to think in a bunch of ways. Because, um, I mean, it's hard to play as Strahd because Strahd is supposedly like a super highly intelligent character. Yes, he's supposed so to like, know uh, all of your weaknesses and exploit them. But then on the, the other, other... Side, oh, we kind of, sorry to keep cutting back, but one of the big things we kind of went into, though, even from a roleplay perspective, is um, we did a lot of other things throughout before we even got here. That's also, true. We probably just yeah. off royally just now before this fight just started. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, is that we, like, something else to consider is that we did go out and do things that, like, correctly, and sometimes that just that's just how it be yeah also, you know when there's there's in module things to make strahd weaker and we did those things you did you destroyed the heart so. which was a big thing and you got the sun blade technically right. you guys would have even wrecked him even more with the holy symbol of ravenkind oh, if yeah. it but then yeah. we got the big thing from my perspective roleplay wise um for why strahd might not be necessarily firing on all cylinders we got arena to sergey yeah, yeah. He's very emotional. technically you guys won right there by getting arena to sergey um, like mechanically, like I mean, we can talk about that next week or whatever. Yeah. But I feel like that would definitely because it, it seemed like 
he was watching us and he he only like he only threw down one because I noticed him in, by accident. And yeah. Two, uh, he just realized what happened. He's super pissed. Yeah, this would probably be the we the weakest point, the weakest point in his on life is this yeah. moment when he was so close to Irina. He was waiting for you guys to come to his domain because he gets lair actions. Uh, and he was supposed to have Bucephalus come swoop him up, but uh Yeah, it definitely he seems died. like this encounter is supposed to have a lot more going on, but we just got yeah. really we did a lot of really good decisions. You did, and and that Sunblade, oh my god, I swear. Like, they honestly <laughs> should nerf that thing, because... It needs to be, like, half the light distance. To... Yeah, they... Yeah. I should have I should have homebrew nerfed it myself, but I'm not going to go I back think, yeah. on my word yeah. at this point. It should be, like, That's it just... should be like, ten, it should start at, like, 10 foot, 20 foot or whatever. Yeah. And Especially with a like... paladin wielding it, like, an Asimar par paladin wielding a Sunblade, like... That, that needs to be nerfed, yeah. <laughs> well, that's something to, in any DM circumstance, is like, you take that to note. Is I'm surprised you didn't play more into my backstory, especially my background. Oh, about your the voice that speaks to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have, actually. I feel I'm like I was... Second, my second angelic guide, so to speak. Yes. I, I Honestly, if this was a different setting, I would have. With Curse of Strahd, there's so much stuff barovia lore that i'm focused on yeah. that i forget to focus on like some of the lore of your guys's individual characters um but yeah dang you guys really you you honestly you guys were worn out and uh, tira could have uh, perma died um very close so literally one roll away from tira being terminally dead right yeah the other thing is you had a rogue that had ridiculous stats. Yeah. <laughs> the Thurkerel factor. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Man. That's crazy. Well, I will have you guys know Rahadin has one ability that he does that nearly wiped our entire party. So there's still hope. <laughs> There's still the hope. You beat Strahd and still died. That's true. Yeah, he, and uh, yeah, nightmares are, are pretty scary too, but there is one thing. Oh my god, I cannot wait for it to, to be cast. It's one special thing that he has that is so evil. And I cannot wait to cast it on you all. But uh, yeah, so maybe, so next week, I think, uh, actually, I don't know if we'll play on Sunday, because... Um, um, Avex might not be available, so maybe we can reschedule yeah. um, to a different oh, day. No. I, it may be actually a shorter session, because it may just be this fight and the epilogue, depending on things. Um, I'm available the day after, if we want to do like Monday or something. Okay. Yeah, I could do Monday after 5 o'clock central, so okay. an hour later. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll coordinate when we're going to play next, and then... Well, any any weekday, I have to start at earliest. I'm gonna say seven. But yeah, maybe we could play. F PM, maybe we could play Saturday. Oh wait, you guys have uh, Avernus, right on Saturday? Uh, no, that would don't. be on the 18th. If we do, 18th yeah. is our next we could session. we could do the 11th. Yeah, and that one. Hey, happen, but thanks, Archon. Yeah, we could be 11th. So maybe uh, we could play um, after my Vampire the Masquerade stream on Saturday. Up to you. Um, wipe yourself out. Because this it may this may be a shorter it may be a shorter session, and then we can do epilogue, and then maybe like just like a decompress chat where we just kind of yeah. talk about things. I kind of want to see how you guys felt about the campaign and feel uh, you know about the story as a whole, and and talk about some things. Um, we've been pretty clear about that so far, Tracy. What? I thought we've been pretty clear about that. So that's far. true. That's true. Amazing job. Yeah, I, like I'm just <laughs> more like actually DMing. It's yeah. one of the best games I've played in a very long time. Thank you. I I appreciate that. Though I'm still. Hey, thank you.
Thank you. Okay. You're, gonna uh, you're not going to get like any huge. I don't think you're going to get any huge like. Oh, you were awful at this. I, I no, definitely not. I think you've handled almost everything really well, and every DM has their strengths and weaknesses. Yep. Um, it just happens to be some of the combat stuff, but you made up for it with a much stronger roleplay game. Yeah, I'm all about the roleplay in, in in this particular setting. So, um, I more wanted a good story and. I, I, I wanted the, the fight to be this epic fight, and I kind of, yeah, I, I messed up, and I'm kind of disappointed, but I'm not going to... Um, but at the end of the day, I don't, I, at least for this week, I don't personally want you going out there thinking you failed Barovia in any way, because I think yeah. personally, um, I don't know another DM that I know that would have done it remotely the justice that you've done it. So, yeah. And I, and what, I mean... Also, it's your first time DMing, so yeah. especially I'm running Strahd as a first time DM, yeah, his stat block is insane. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, God, that sunlight! Oh <laughs> my God! Yeah, like I probably would have done worse than you did uh, if I was doing this I as a first time DM. So, I do. You use some seventh level spell to delete in the beginning, <laughs> not get up in yeah. my face and delete. Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's that's fine. We there's still uh, one more fight to go, and um, then yeah, we can kind of just see what happens at the end of Curse of Strahd, and then we can yeah have a little recap session. So it should be. It should be uh, it should be good. So next week will likely be our last our last session. Everybody, Rip. feels for this bad campaign, man. Anyway. For this campaign, yeah, for this campaign, for now. Um, we play more. So yeah, we may play on Saturday. I'll I'll coordinate offline, and then we'll be back. But we probably won't be back next Sunday. But just FYI for everybody, and. Yeah, that's about it. Um, thanks everybody for anybody watching on the stream or in the VOD or anything later. Yeah, please, please don't be be kind and don't hate me. Shout out to, uh, <laughs> shout out to that one guy on YouTube who always leaves really nice comments. Yes, uh, James yeah. Sider. Th shout out to you, you for like your stuff. for yeah for watching every episode and yeah it's it's very uh, it's awesome to read your comments. So always commenting, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to anybody who does who has been watching, um, you guys are awesome. This has been a lot of fun. We appreciate you. We do appreciate you. <laughs> fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that's that. So thanks again. Thanks for the bits, everybody, and the subs and the resubs and all of that. So goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, chat. Bye-bye.